I'm doing what I want to do. I was scuba diving in caves this year. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I jumped off a cliff in Montenegro. Like, I'm in Paris at this writing workshop. Like, I'm doing what I want to do, and that is worth stretches of loneliness. Right, so I think, don't some people go like, well, don't you get lonely? And like, yeah, but what you're saying is, shouldn't you not have all this awesome because of the one negative? Yeah. Or, or like, or like, won't you get hungry? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I will be hungry. And then like, it might be an hour before I eat. It. I wish I wasn't hungry. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm not going to not go to this fucking awesome thing. Exactly. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ari Shafir Skeptic Tech Podcast. I'm Ari Shafir, coming to you live from the Luxembourg Gardens in uh, Paris. Gay Paris, they call it. Um, I'm here taking a class, not at the gardens, but I'm here at uh, Paris taking a writing class, Rolf Potts writing class. And I, um, I'm going to keep this short and sweet because I want to get back out in Paris. I met a lot of cool people. It's a travel writing class, travel memoirs, something like that. It was great. It was great. You should all take it. Um, Actually, did a podcast with Rolf Potts about his new book, The Vagabond's Way. It's going to be out in October, right here from this garden, way over that way. Uh, it'll be out in October uh, when his when his book comes out. Um, but the cool thing about doing a travel writing class in Paris, France, that's about travel, is you meet a lot of cool travelers, dude. I met a lot of cool people. I met a lot of interesting people. I met a couple of vagabonders. Uh, and I met two nomads. One was like about 70 years old. Forgive me, David, if I'm wrong by a couple years. I uh, was living in Hawaii for a while and then said, fuck it, fuck this life. I don't want to fucking stay here forever. So I was living in Treblinka, is that Tbilisi, Georgia. It's so cool. He just has no home. Another woman named Zylea, Zylea Burroughs, uh, been a nomad for six years. No home. Just move around from spot to spot. Uh, and man, not only is that interesting, it's envious. Uh, I'm jealous of these people. So David had to leave right after class, but I had a chance to talk to Zylea about being a nomad, about what it's like to have no home, and that's what this podcast is. That's what today's episode's all about. I got two things to announce to you guys. But By the way, if you want to hear more about my trip to Paris, uh, go to my Patreon. I'm going to go deeper into it on that. Patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. For just five bucks a month, I will give you one free extra audio or audio and video podcast every single month, sometimes even two. It's a pretty good deal. Um, and uh, that's why I put shit that I don't really want to talk about uh, to everybody. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, and two, two comics, two cigars is coming. YouTube, youtube.com slash two comics, two cigars. It's coming next week. Two comics, two cigars every week. It's not a podcast. It's a YouTube series. Um, guys, don't forget to hit subscribe here. Uh, follow Zylea. Uh, she's on Instagram at uh, Zylista, X-Y-L-I-S-T-A. Follow me on Instagram. Do whatever the fuck you want with your lives. Go to fucking Paris and take a writing class. It's great. It was cool to meet all these fucking awesome, cool travelers. I got fucking jealous. I started wanting to go out and fucking do shit again. I didn't get the chance. Look how fucking pretty this garden is. I got a light for you. It's fucking gorgeous, isn't it? Let me look at what you're looking at. There's a, there's a right over there. If you're watching on YouTube, it's a fucking pond where a bunch of kids push out these like sailboats. They just stick, push them out with a the stick and they just wait for the sailboat. It's about that big. Uh, to go to the other side, they just run around. It's pretty fucking awesome. <sighs> all right, let's start the episode. So it's all about being a nomad. Um, and if you want, as I said, if you want to hear more about the pod, if I can trip to Paris, go to patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. Guys, let's start. Ari Shafir, Skeptic, episode 480. Um... I gotta get back out. It's been a fucking fun week. It's been a fucking fun week. I'm sitting here in this park all day just eating a baguette and fucking slicing off cheese. (laughs) I'm going for it. I got this fucking French-ass mustache. Uh, Guys, please hit subscribe. Follow Zylea. Tell her if you have any questions about uh, being a nomad. And again, I just want to say, this is not... uh, She's not giving advice on how to do it. She said this is her experience. So you might not like everything she does, but I would say at some point, if you're thinking of it, 
Stop thinking of reasons why you can't. Start thinking of ways that you can. Uh, I'm Ari Shafir, and this is Ari Shafir's Episode 480, Nomad with Zylea Burroughs. Starts now. Zylea. <laughs> Greek Hi. name? Hi, Ari. Yes. Um, okay, so the cool thing about um, traveling or this class in general uh, or whatever is meeting fucking interesting, um, nice, unique people on the road. And then I met you. And my life changed. <laughs> uh, we're taking this great class. How great was the class? We'll start with that so you don't have to feel self-conscious. Zylea feels a little self-conscious. <laughs> I absolutely love the class. I'm Ugh. so glad it came. It was worth all the Airbnb turmoil. Yeah. And <laughs> lots of other mishaps. We took like, Rolf Potts' uh, writing class. Introduction to writing. Travel memoir. Travel workshop. memoir. Yeah. yeah. What did you learn, Ari? I learned a lot. <laughs> the writing exercises were great. Yeah. Spying on people was great. Um, you know, just keep that there. You're I fine. I didn't know that. No, it's okay. <laughs> I, I have comedian friends who just kind of like go like this, um, who should know better. Um, what did you learn? It's funny because I have an English lit degree, but I actually Me learned too. so much about, um, writing or I was reminded about a lot of rules of writing. Yeah. So my favorite thing actually was like how to start a story by really grabbing them with something outrageous, right? especially with attention spans oh, these yeah, days exactly. being uh -huh. so much shorter than they used to be. You know, you really have to have a powerful opening line. Um, so that was just really highlighted for me. Yeah. Yeah, that was big. Because go, I'll go forever before I get to the story. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, you want to clear your throat. Is that what you call it? Throat yeah, clearing? throat clearing. Yeah. So something we learned was that um, a lot of people, a lot of book editors actually delete like the first paragraph and the last paragraph yeah, or pointless. even the first page and the last page. Yeah. Page, full page of like full page. trash, nothing. Yeah. But you can find really good stuff in the middle of a story usually. You ever have someone tell a story like at a party or a hostel or something and then and they're like they're telling you the story and they finish it like, what was the first five minutes for? <laughs> You know, I first went to Israel when I was this, and I was, I was religious back then. As a, anyway, so then I, I took a flight from Israel to Paris. So I was in Paris, and then I was like, wait, what was Israel? Yeah. What? Well, I had to tell you how I got there. I'm like, no, you didn't. No. I know where Paris is. I, I know how people get there. Plane, boat, or train? <laughs> I don't care where you were before Paris. Yeah. Who cares? Uh, um, but you and David, two people that I met, are, are nomads. Digital, well, no. No, digital nomads, my term. Nomads. You have yes. no home. So we had to meet everybody. And then, uh, and then it was like, where are you from? Where are you from? Where do you, you know, where do you live? Where do you live? And you're like, nowhere. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool. How long have you been doing that? How, yeah, well, today I live in Paris. <laughs> right now? So do you. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing it for six years. Six fucking years. Actually, next month. Oh, actually, because August is in two days. Yeah. So six years next week. Six years. Yeah. God uh, damn. August 2016. I love the different sounds of the f sirens here. <laughs> it seems like a spy, like someone's chasing a spy whenever I hear those sirens. It's a fire truck. What are this, uh, the police sounds? Is it different too? I think so, yeah. Police and fire are different. They are different? Yeah. Smart. Our class is across from a fire station. I know. <laughs> but all we did was hear them work out. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we did. Really, we had, They're like blasting fires. like rap music yeah, and like look out doing push-ups. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're just working out, getting their swole on. That was a nice surprise. Yeah. I'm not complaining about that. <laughs> yeah, all the chicks were like, oh, fireman. They were legitimately hot. <laughs> like, got to check the weather, like Lena. <laughs> <laughs> it's fire with a chance of moistness. Um, uh Six years, no home. Right. Or not no home, right? No permanent residence. No permanent yeah. residence. Yep. So how do you, well, first, how did you even start with that? Like, how did you, how did you decide? Mm. What made you, like, go? You were, where were you living before? Let's start with that. I was that. living in Portland, Oregon. Okay. Most of my and, listeners have heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've always had kind of wanderlust and itchy feet, I guess they say, right? Had you been tra have you been a traveler before that? I had, yeah. So I lived in Chicago after I went to school in New York. I went to Chicago for four years and I read Rolf Potts is Vagabonding. So that book changed my life. What, what year? Um, a long time ago. Yeah, like 04 or something. I probably read the book. Okay. And that took me a couple of years to, you know, get the courage and the money savings together. And then right. all this buildup was for like a three month backpacking trip around Europe, which now sounds who, like who such gave a you small amount of who time. Who gave you the trip? I think I found it in a bookstore. Just I saw it. Just picked it up and was like, yeah. cool cover? Yeah. That's awesome. 
Yeah. And now we're hanging out with Ralph Potts in Paris. So. Now we're hanging out with it's Ralph Potts. It's so crazy how things happen. The cool thing was we were meeting everybody and you were like, you're like, yeah, I want to try some travel writing. You know, I, I learned about you from this. And you're like, you changed the course of my life. I read your book like shortly after it came out and my whole life was different. <laughs> Which is like, it gets thrown around probably, as I said, I could like almost hear people like, change my life. You're like, why? I'm like, I switched from tequila to, to vodka. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, it didn't change your life. Um, so then you, you did a backpacking trip. I did. Just regular like dirt bag? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Hostels. Hostels. You know. Love them. Too old for that now, but. <laughs> yeah. It was really fun then. Yeah. And it was my first solo trip Wasn't it as so an adult, fun? you know, like yeah. like on my own, going where I wanted to go. What's that feeling like? It's just freedom, right? Such it's a freedom, freedom to like choose where you want to where you want to go. And where, where did you, you start see. there? Why Europe? Um, I've always loved Europe. I actually came to Paris when I was five. My mom was a flight attendant, so we flew for free. Yeah. And so I'd been to Paris and London and Rome and Cairo before I graduated high school. Yeah. And all over the U.S. And then um, I just really loved Europe. I love how they appreciate art and culture. And I grew up in suburban St. Louis, and you know they have. A couple of good museums there, but when I came to Paris when I was 18, um, I remember seeing like billboards for art shows, right? Because I was used to seeing in billboards Paris. for oh, wow. yeah. right Jesus Saves and yeah. like you know the hardware store. And I got here, and it was like all the billboards. It looks different now. I mean, it's a long time ago, but like then it was they're promoting art and cool events and cultural things like the ballet and the opera. Yeah, it's pretty cool how they fucking focus on that like you see all that at the louvre it's like all the thinkers and stuff that yeah are, that right around. it's like they, yeah. they celebrate that that shit yeah right they care it's part yeah. of the culture it's embedded in the culture right yeah it's, it's embedded not like in the culture, oh exactly. we should go to a play once a year once every couple of years it's like it's part of the fabric of a lot of european culture which i really love and appreciate yeah we met some director after we left you guys one night we stopped by the lebanese place to get shawarma we met some guy who's like, what are you guys doing? Like standoffish, but then like, what do you do? We're talking. I was like, what do you do? He goes, I work in the film industry. I was like, that's very broad. <laughs> like, what do you do? Because I'm a director. And we're like, what? Just lead with that. Yeah. Anyway, he was like, <laughs> he was like, Francois Truffaut is the greatest. And you're like, it's just, I was just like, he's so cool. It's like, everyone here is so cool. <laughs> it's yeah, like, respect, right. like artsy shit. Right. And you went out with another guy. Yeah, another guy. And we're talking about like the best time for the for the for art. He was like, "No, it's classical art." I'm like, "Cause I'm like, I can't." The Louvre and the Musée d'Orsay. It's like it's all like old art. I like modern. He's right. like, "No, modern. No, I'm a photorealistic. These guys change the game on how to do stuff." And right. I'm like, "I need them commenting on what's now." And then everyone's around. All these artists are like talking about like the best time period in the arts. And I'm like, "Where am I? I never get into these conversations." <laughs> yeah, at right. Home. Exactly. Right. <laughs> And that guy owned a t-shirt shop, right? Yeah, he owned a t-shirt yeah. shop. He's just trying to like, ah, we do fun, cool screen printing. <laughs> yeah. Of 90s bands. What, um, what, um, yeah, God. So you traveled around mm -hmm. Europe. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah, I did. I did. And then I went back to kind of regular life. I mean, I did some other really weird things um, after that trip. I lived at Arco Santi in Arizona, which is a, um, it's like an idealistic city of the future. It was supposed to um, combine the concepts of architecture and ecology into the self-sustaining city. Um, and the architect was Italian, Paolo Soleri. Um, he wanted to have these replicatable in order to prevent urban sprawl and like to save the world, basically. What's replicatable? Um, he wanted this, like the actual structure of the self-contained city. Oh, once it was successful, he thought like 500,000 people would end up living in this city and to this date, it started in 1970, so it's Where is 50 this? years is this? old, this experiment. It's like north of Phoenix. It's like a bubble dome city? It Actually, there are a lot of domes. Maybe you've seen pictures of it then. Yeah, it's really... In the city? It's, it's not a city now. It's like, um, it's like this stalled utopia, right? So it's, okay. like, it's like this constant work in progress. It's been under construction for 50 years. And like 50 people live there now, like full time. But people come in and out. So you can go for a couple months and like learn about architecture. I went for permaculture to learn about Whoa. farming and sustainable agriculture. Personally. Like a kibbutz, but like the city's built with the idea of like sustainability. Yeah, right. Because it's wow. self because it's uh self contained, high density. Okay. Right? It's like Manhattan is like more sustainable than Phoenix. Because you have one of everybody. It's there. what's the density, right? I don't understand that. Okay. 
So um, urban sprawl, uh, I mean, everyone is driving, right? Like LA, you lived in LA, right? Uh Um, Let me think about like all the single people in cars, like driving, commuting for hours. So it's just the idea of like a highly dense, walkable environment saves on a lot. Then you don't have this car culture, right? Oh, right. You can bike or walk. Right. Um, and then things are just more compact. So there's not like all this shipping and commuting and, and right. driving, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I don't, I can get groceries. <laughs> I, yeah, there's tons of shit I can get. Right. Whatever yeah. I need within like three blocks. Yeah, you live in Manhattan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's convenient, right? One, two, eight, eighth Avenue. But you're also not driving, Avenue. are you? I'm not driving. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so we built a city based on that. Cool. So, so you have to work on but it. But the point is, yeah, I was just like, oh, that sounds interesting. And I'd heard about it twice from two different people I'd met. And I'm like, I was just compelled enough to go and try my hand at farming and learn about architecture. Um, and after that, I moved to Portland, Oregon and actually started working in the architecture industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I do marketing and copywriting and I just and I also organize events and I started working at the Center for Architecture in Portland. And then I had this like normal nine to five life for another 10 years, you know? Yeah. And did like, you have, like after a- that experience. So it's like the travel and living at Arcosanti, it planted the seed in me, right? But then I just, I couldn't just, I couldn't afford it, you know, to, forever. To leave. To just travel forever, Did you want right? another like vagabonding trip? Like another three Yeah, so trip? I always wanted to do what I'm doing now again. Yeah. But it took me 10 years. You know, I, I built a career for myself and I made friends and... Why? Why did it take a 10... Like what do you... What do you like in, in that person's head mm. from 10, 16 years ago, mm. what were they like? Oh, I can't do it yet. I have to... <sighs> Is yeah, like, I think yeah, I think there's a lot of fear and trepidation. I mean, get the career going. Yeah, well, that too, right? Like, like I'm building this. Like, yeah, in the right. Yeah, I mean, you have to learn skills to yeah. to do anything as a human. I think, um, and I guess I got sucked into it. Honestly, <laughs> I kind of got sucked into Portland. It's one of those places where you get comfortable. You know, I mean, there's so many cliches about it, but it's like the place young people go to retire. I don't know if you've heard this. No, it's okay. weird. It's one of those keep Portland weird, keep Boston weird. <laughs> kind of, yeah. It's yeah. just like, it's comfortable. It's convenient. It's beautiful. There are a lot of trees. I love hiking. Yeah. So like I got to live in a city, a walkable neighborhood, but also yeah. I could drive 30 minutes and be in total forest nature, hiking with waterfalls. So, and then the coast is only an hour away. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes mm-hmm. people go like, well, they want to do this thing of like, I wanted to travel. Mm-hmm. But port, but but like then they want to like negate the thing you're already doing. Would you be like both are cool? Right. Like Portland is cool. I just could also want to do some other thing. Yeah. Right. But it wasn't like I was living in some dumb fucking city that I hated. Yeah. Right. No, it wasn't that bad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so then at some point it started. The nag became stronger. Yes. Or what? Okay. Really, it did. It really started. It was like the. Yeah, the nagging or, you know, the call Mm -hmm. to be a vagabond and to travel again long term without any plan to come back. Like that got stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And I could not turn it off anymore. Had you taken vacations and stuff? Yeah, I did. But you know, the States, well, like you don't have a conventional job, (laughs) but like most people get maybe two weeks if they're lucky. Mm -hmm. I always, you know, negotiated like three or four weeks off, but still that's not enough to, I mean, a lot of us have family that live all over the U S yeah. Right. So it's like not even enough time. And to you gotta like, go do that. It's like, oh, so I got a Christmas. I got to visit. There. Yeah. So right. That, that shouldn't count as vacation time. Yeah. But it does. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, we just, we just, yeah, I don't, we don't have enough time to really see like the far stretches of the world. And also, even you know? if you're going to like, all right, I'll go to, I don't know, Thailand for a week. Let's say it's too short to go there. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Go somewhere cool for a, yeah. a week. Iceland. Yeah. Um, then you're like. It's still just a week. It's like it's fun, but it just it bought me a, like it yeah. bought me like a little bit of sanity. But then, oh, so like this will in Central Park is like our little piece of nature, mm. but it's not really nature. So if you're going nuts because you're like I I need some nature, Central Park will buy you like a week, mm. you know. Yeah. But then but then that's it. But then you really got to go hiking or camping. You got to go then You can have two months. Yeah, yeah you exactly. Go out there. Go to and then you can really breathe. Connecticut, Vermont. Where do you guys go? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Upstate or just like out the Catskills, the Poconos. Yeah. There's places. But I'm like, it doesn't even buy you a week. It buys like three days of sanity. We're like, okay, yeah. you can breathe here for a minute. Yeah. But then you're almost right back to where you were in almost yeah. no time. Tompkins Square doesn't do it for you? No, Tompkins Square does not. <laughs> <laughs> She's living my neighborhood. Um, and so then, so this nagging's going. Yeah. So how do you start planning? Or do you, like, yeah. I love that question. Yeah. I'll tell you. Okay. 
So not to be too woo woo, but I, I kind of like manifested a little bit. Yeah. So I was home one night and just like really unhappy with my life at that point. You know, my job was just, I was, it was just, I don't know, I could do it in my sleep, you know? And I was just like living in the same apartment for five years, which is the longest I've lived anywhere. And I was just like having the nagging, right? So I went online. I saw there's a Lonely Planet sale, like a huge book sale. I think they have it like once or twice a year. It's like 30% off, right? And I just like bought all of these books. Like I bought Japan, South America on a shoestring, Australia, Nicaragua, something else. And they came in the mail. And I mean... It was just weird. It was like one of those impulse purchases, right? Like probably had a couple glasses of wine after work. And I'm just like, oh, okay. And then the books came in. And then I was um, running a lecture series at the time called Pachakacha, Pachakucha Night. Have you heard of that? No. No. Um, It started in Tokyo. And it's a really cool lecture format where you have, each person has 20 seconds uh, and 20 slides to like, to talk about some like thesis, to tell this story, right? So you have like six, six and a half minutes to like tell this compelling story. 20 seconds each slide? Yeah. Okay. So you only have like about six minutes each, right? As you flip, it's kind of like a yeah. caption for Instagram. You're just like. Yeah, right. But it, it's live. It. It's kind this. of like. Oh, it's a cool. live event at a nightclub. So we used to have it at Holocene in Portland. And uh, oh, that's fun. I think the capacity was like 150. The biggest one is in Tel Aviv. The biggest Pachacucha night in the world is in Tel Aviv. Pachacucha? Pachacucha, yeah. That sounds cool. That's the American way to say it. The Japanese right. say it properly it is yeah. like that um so i was running that lecture series well with a group um co-running that lecture series for about four years and it was super fun and then out of the blue like a few days after i got those books in the mail um the organizer one of the organizers in tokyo who was american he's lived in tokyo for 20 years wrote me on facebook messaged me on facebook i never met him i didn't know who he was and he was like hey zylea i know that you are an organizer of the portland chapter there are a thousand chapters around the world. He's like, we're inviting all the organizers around the world. If you can make it to Tokyo. A thousand people are invited. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. well a lot of us also, it's a committee. So it's probably like more like 4,000 people oh. or 5,000 people. To Tokyo to do what? If you make it to Tokyo on your own dime, uh, we're going to have this like three day workshop with the founders of Pachacucha Night. These two really famous architects who are uh, European who, um, yeah, they live in Tokyo now. They're the most well-known foreign architects who live in Tokyo um they're like if you can make it here we're gonna have three days with other people like you from around the world talking about how to make Pachacucha night this lecture series better and more interesting and like we'll take you out and like see Tokyo and I'd never been I don't think I'd been to Asia at all at that point whoa and but I just ordered the Japan book with like absolutely no like money or idea or plan to ever go to Japan but it's like yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like I was being yeah. personally invited to Tokyo. I'm like, you cannot make this shit up. Um, so obviously I took it as a sign. So and I, yeah. yeah. Oh, and it was in a month. It was only a month away. So for people with regular jobs, that yeah. can sometimes be difficult. Yeah. People are like, no, you can't. We need you then. <laughs> right. So fortunately, what? my work let me go and I fly for free, which is part of, of yeah. My parents flight attendant worked. Mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, fly, great, for, fly great. standby on American Airlines. So um, yeah, I made it happen and got over there and met these other people like me running this interesting lecture series. Um, and they're from all over the world. There was a guy from Yemen who like, you know, you're actually not like at that time, you couldn't leave. You couldn't go in and out of Yemen. And he like, because he got was, out for the conference because he works at the Red Cross, he was able to fly to Djibouti on a Red Cross plane and then made his way to this event in Tokyo. I mean, that's really rad. Wow. And there's a woman from Oman. There are people from Australia. Um, I'm sure, yeah. All and over. Whatever, did you prepare a slideshow? Yeah, actually, that was fun. Each of us had to give our own Pachacucha presentation about our city, like where we were coming from. Okay. So, so you had to go around taking pictures and like... What do you mean? You had to go around taking pictures for the slides? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was about Portland, so I just, I had photos oh, right, that right, I could right. use. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fair. <laughs> um, okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So then, so then what? So you did that and came back? Yeah, but I was like extremely invigorated and I was like, okay, I don't fit into this like life I was trying to be happy in. Yeah. Like I officially don't. I officially do not. Right. 
I cannot fit in this like I don't know what you want to call it. Nine Box. to five life is understandable by a lot of yeah. people, you know. Yeah, I, it just didn't work for me. I'm like, okay, this is definitely. Yeah, a dude, sign. I came here and I'm like, fucking two weeks. It's 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 tough to carve out two weeks with right. everything going on. And then you're like, and then like it's five days in, you're like, I could never come home. That's possible that I'll just not come home. Right. Like I go from Morocco here to Morocco. Right. And then just like, oh, I fully like fuck that life. I don't need it anymore. You can do it, Ari. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. So you had that in you where you're like, I'm free now. And I suddenly see it from the outside in. Yeah. Like yeah. Like, oh, what am I doing there? I think it was being around all of these people from all these different countries yeah, and continents. Uh-huh. And like, but we all were so, we were so like-minded because we cared about sharing ideas because we all curated speakers, right? We all found interesting people to come and speak about cool stuff. And so we all cared about this kind of like, you know, connection and learning and storytelling, you know, but like from a cross cultural perspective, I guess. So yeah, it just it just solidified my my wanderlust. I was like, I gotta go. I gotta go. Whoa. So then I'll tell you though how I prepared. I got these like huge post it. Have you seen like the huge post its? They're like huge pieces of paper that you post it notes? Yeah, but they're like massive, like okay. the painting, you know? Oh wow. And I like put them I had a white wall like this and like covered my wall with these like huge pieces of paper that have a sticky the wor- yeah, what are they saying? And markers. And I just wrote down like things I have to see and do in the like, world before I die. Yeah. Whoa. So I wrote down like all the things I wanted to do and see and experience in my life. And then here I just wrote the months like so that was March 15. So I left <clears throat> I left like a year later. Um, sorry, pause. It's OK. <laughs> so what'd you write? What'd you write on here? Like, what type of things did you write on here? Cough. Places? Yeah, so places and also things I wanted to do. Like, I wanted to scuba dive. I've never scuba dived. Yeah, I wanted to go paragliding. Did you keep adding to the first one? <laughs> I wanted to, like, swim with sharks. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, like, experiences and also places. Okay, right. right. So that was this one. And this one was, like, April, May, June, and, like, what I had to do. So it was, what like, do you mean? What do you have to like do? quit my, like, give two weeks notice. Find a storage have, so unit. So in the second one, did you have, right. so let's say it's March. Right. When you... You had already written March, April, May, June. Yeah. You had written the next few months out. Oh, yeah. It took me about a year to plan my my escape, my departure Whoa. from the U.S. And so you're like, in September, I'm going to do this. Right. It's like save, you know, X amount a month ev- for right. the next 12 months. Um, you know, sell your car, uh, start researching where to go, you know, figure yeah. out an online business, like figure out how to make money online. I mean, that can take some people yeah, it's not just like really I'll go. Well. I gotta find a job or find a way to do it. Right? right, you can't just suddenly do it. Right. So it was just I just wow. like intentionally planned it, and also wow. I think the power for me was that it was in my living room. So like Couldn't. every day, many times a day, I would see this desire list. Yeah. And then like how to make it happen. Did you ever go to the second sheet and go, "Fuck, I didn't do that," and like feel some guilt? Like, I, all right, I gotta get on it. Not really. <laughs> no, you just got it. You just did. Yeah. Wow. I like check things off my to-do list. You know, yeah. I get things done. <laughs> no, I know. But sometimes when I'm like, I'll probably be like, hey, by Thursday, I got to like call this thing. And then Friday comes. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Or I'll ignore it completely. But if there's a list right there, I'm like, oh, I failed. I got to get on it now. Like I missed my deadline. Yeah, just, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's- I mean, it's a good way to hold yourself accountable is to have it up there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Damn. Okay. So that's how I planned. Did people come over and, and we're like, what's yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice way yeah. too. Because people like, you have to say it out loud and then they'll be like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like if you, so for advice, if people are interested in doing this, like for me, sure. like a lot of people are like just so afraid. They're so afraid of making a move uh-huh. of any kind. And, and that's a big scary one is if you, if you're an adult and you have like furniture and like $500 Vitamix and a car and a bicycle and all this stuff, right? It is hard to leave a job, a location dependent job leave your home, all of your belongings, your friends and family, et cetera, and go. It's very difficult. I found it very difficult actually to, I say, extract myself, like to leave. It was, it was emotionally difficult and it was logistically difficult. The and emotional it's, thing it's is probably expensive. a bigger thing than people think about. Because they're like, well, how would I do that? How would I pay for things? But it's also like, I'm sure like, it maybe comes real right when you're leaving. You're like, oh, I'm not going to see you guys again for a long time. Yeah. You're my yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was afraid I was going to die. 
Like I, mean? I yeah. Well, um, I just had a lot of fears of traveling solo. Yeah. Like, I don't Danger. know. I mean, maybe it's just my own anxiety. No, but it's like the unknown was... in the world. There's a level of xenophobia we have in America, where it's like, uh, <clears throat> what are people doing out there? Is everyone just getting murdered every day? Well, I think it was other people's fear of a woman traveling solo that, you know, got into my head where I'm like, oh, is this crazy? Like, am yeah. I putting myself at death's door? Well, like the other day when we were going home and you're like, and we stopped to watch those tango things. And, and um, I mean, tell me if I got it wrong, but like, and you were like, hey, I'm too tired. You guys stay. I want to go home. And Zane's like, oh, should we walk you back? And I'm you, sure you offered, actually. I No. It was no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, it's a safe city and she's a fucking adult and a traveler. But like, you guys felt like you compelled to leave yeah, and walk with like, me. That'd be nice. Thank you. I'd be like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, let's go. But I'm like, yeah, but it, th- that's. I was like, it's okay. You guys stay because you guys are loving watching the tango yeah, dancers. We found these tango dancers dancing in front of the opera house at what was 11 at night, 11.30 yeah. at night. It, it was, was so gorgeous. cool. Right. It was so cool. They right. were, and they were all so good. It wasn't like a class. Yeah, it was in a it was a they meetup. Were like pros. Yeah, it was a meetup, and they yeah. switch partners every song. Four songs, every four songs. We found out later. Oh, okay. It's a four song. Yeah, I art. didn't know that. Yeah, cool. Because I left early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I left, and they they were like, "Oh, you know, should we walk you?" And I'm like, "Well, I've been doing this alone for like 20 years." Yeah, like, and you're also like, <laughs> "I walked home alone yesterday. Like yeah. this isn't you know I'm not even new to this city." Yeah, I've been in Paris a week already. I know where I'm yeah. going. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so there's a fear of like a solo female traveler. I get that too. Like yeah, you can let people's fears just like stories. in your head. So like, don't let that happen. But the one thing of advice I was trying to get to is like, set a date. Set a date. It could be a year from now. Mm-hmm. That's and why like, I tell people open micers. Like Sebastian said the same things. I yeah. want to try it. I'm like, okay. So how often are they? He goes, it's every night. I was, okay, pick a random date where. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was like, he was like, uh, it was. It's let's say it's August first right now, just about. Yeah. And I'm like, September 20th. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And so then you have to do it. You yeah, know, exactly. Find out where. Exactly. And then like, that's the, I will be going to that yes. place that night. Yes. And tell someone like you, tell you for accountability, like, I'm doing this. Exactly. Right. Tell your friends. Even right. if you're not invited, but like, ask me on the 21st, you know. Right. How yeah. it was. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, set a date, buy the plane ticket, buy a one-way plane ticket. Buy a one-way plane ticket. Just buy right. it. And then you've wasted the money. That's another thing that'll probably help you drive, right? Right. Yeah. I'm not just going to sure. miss it. Like next year. Yeah. So today is what? July 30th? Next July 30th, like buy a plane ticket for like Ooh. the wildest place you want to go to. Like for me, my top ones I haven't been to are New Zealand, um, Norway. Norway's nice. Uh, yeah, those are my top two right now. Um, and so, so it's like just plane, buy just the say ticket. I'm buying a plane ticket for, for Paris yeah. in, in uh, J- July of 2023. Right. And then you're like, well, you're going. One way ticket. Right. You're going to start that day. Right. Because then it's also like it takes away like, well, what if that's not the day I'll be ready? It's like you get got to get, <laughs> get ready. You get ready. Yes. You're going to get this done. Yeah. If you have a date and you're better case scenario, you'll be ready like a month before and you'll just be sitting around waiting for that fucking plane ticket to. Wow. Good. That's good advice. It's good advice. And so you went to where first? I visited family friends in Philadelphia. <laughs> Super okay. exciting. Sure. Great. Cool. <laughs> Did the steps, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I flew to London, my one of my favorite cities in the world. Yeah. Um, and then I went to Glasgow, visited an old friend from Chicago who lived there, um, Edinburgh for the first time. And then I flew to Venice, Italy for, actually it was a similar workshop to the one we just had this week. It was called Creative Rehab. Yeah. And it was kind of like, it was a week long thing um, to kind of jolt your creativity. But it wasn't just writers, it was writers and visual artists and photographers and dancers and just people who didn't even consider themselves artists but wanted to just have a more creative life. So okay. yeah, I flew there and met a friend who had mo- uh, was an expat and who was living in Europe at the time and she came and we met in Venice and um, that was amazing. And what, you hung out? It was this workshop. It was this like, yeah, it was like five days of intensive, it was exercises, like creativity exercises, journaling. Where'd you stay in in London, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Venice? Um, In London, I stayed in an Airbnb. Is that what you mean? Okay. Yeah, that's what Um, place. I think all three of those I stayed in Airbnbs. And then... Did you have money saved up? Venice, I stayed in a hotel. I did. How much? Yeah. 
Do I have to say that? <laughs> you don't have to, but it'd be nice to hear like how much um, you saved. Up. I mean, you got to save. It's not like it's like just gifted to you. You have to save it. Well, I've been working for yeah. 16 years or something. Yeah. So, I mean. In the travel world, that's a lot of money. In the long-term travel world, because you have all these backpackers in that world that bring the average yeah. down to, I have 200 bucks. And I'm not saying you need that. I mean, yeah. it, it depends on where you want to go and what, you know, we have a friend here who's very, like, budget. He's a budget mm-hmm. traveler. And it's really inspiring to me. He's really young. And he reminds me of how I was when I was 26 when I was doing that backpacking trip. I remember I would buy, like, a bre- you know, a thing of bread like in Germany and like a piece of cheese and I would like carry this little thing of mustard with me in my backpack <laughs> yeah. like literally and I just would like snack kind of like our friend here does like he just kind of like forages you know for food and like stays yeah. in hostels yeah he takes honey and, things from the from the, yeah. from the kitchen right and he's like oh, those will be good for calories <laughs> yeah he just has them yeah I ordered because you guys I was with uh, uh, one of the students like smoking yeah while you guys were all in that it, where that square was when but those people were playing live music when street performers three nights ago okay um and we were smoking off by ourselves and then we came oh, in oh yeah yeah and then i was getting tuned up i was drunk and i needed some food and you guys had already eaten so i just asked the guy i was like can you bring some more bread oh right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um to soak up the alcohol yeah right yeah and then that budget guy was just like sweet yeah <laughs> yeah i saw him like oh you've been holding out eating right and you saw your opportunity yeah free bread sure and Adriel and I shared a salad and we both had this amazing salmon dish. Yeah. Like each of us got our own, but we shared a salad. And she didn't finish hers and she like made this cute little plate for him. Really? Like little salmon, <laughs> like sweet potatoes. She like gave it to him. Uh, it was really nice. cute. But I mean, yeah, I just, I'm inspired by, and he couch surf it, uh-huh. surfs. <laughs> um, you know, there are like lots and lots of ways to travel within any kind of budget, right? Yeah. So that's why I didn't really want to say the amount because I don't want people to be like, oh my God, I'll never have that. That's a, yeah. That's a lot to save up. Um, and I, I would never say like, oh yeah, take money out of your retirement to like just go flit around the world for you. I mean. But I remember in vagabonding, it was like, it was like if you start now, like right. every bag lunch you make is right. another 15 bucks towards your right. fucking dream trip. Exactly. That's why and if so you really want to do this, uh-huh. you should have this like list, like your dream list of things you want to do and see, uh-huh. like have it everywhere, like have it up in your house, have it in your wallet, have it on your phone. You know, yeah. and if you're like, oh, should we have another thirty dollar lunch? Screen like we saver. ended up just having like what a forty dollar lunch, yeah. like that wasn't planned. Yeah, and you know, like you can be more intentional. Yeah, it's, right. You can be like, hey, uh, this is actually too expensive. Right. I love when you're in hostels and you're like, hey, let's go to a place, and then like three of the five people are like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, right. And you're like, what? Oh shit, is four dollars too much? Like, there's a two dollar place over there. Right. And you're like, yep. Right. Let's go. Right. right. Like flawful and beer, sit outside. Mm-hmm. Like you know. There are lots of ways to travel. So I don't want that number to like scare anybody because okay. that's, but again, I mean, yeah, it was just, it was just what I felt comfortable with. And yeah, again, I used it and then built it up. I'm not even saying I even spent that much, right. but for me and my, with my anxiety and like fear of running out of money in six months and being homeless or, um, for me, that's what I needed to feel comfortable. Yeah. I mean, it is a, there's a, there's a, I talked to Garrett about it. There's a yeah. money is a, unit of time when you're traveling mm. you know if yep. you can like the the ones who go like a thousand bucks a month in southeast asia mm. i'm like okay so that's 500 dollars for 15 days 250 bucks a week pretty much mm. so then it's like all right if i lose 250 bucks i've just lost a week on the road because i gotta mm. go home when it's out yeah right so yeah. yeah yeah exactly yeah so it's a safety of like i'm not a month away from leaving. I'm three months away from leaving. I'm still going to try to work, but like, yeah. Wow. So you went to Venice. Yeah. And then I guess the adventure started, the real adventure started. <laughs> Cause those are like, you know, pretty normal places to go. Yeah. Um, I decided to rent a car. Yeah. Oh, I had this like romantic notion of writing, having like a solo writer's retreat at a farm in like Tuscany. It's running one. No, like no, the, like going yeah. on my own to a farm in Tuscany and having a week to just write, just yeah. be alone and oh, write. That and, is romantic, right? So yeah. I had this like totally like built up romantic notion in my head, and so I was in Venice, and my friends were flying off to wherever they lived, and I rented a car. I can drive a stick shift. Thank you very much. Nice. <laughs> um, 
and I ended up driving myself across Venice, um, across Italy to this tiny little town in Tuscany where I think it was October too. So the costs were like a lot lower. Like you can get great deals traveling a shoulder season, which is what I try to do. Shoulder season? Yeah. What does that mean? So based on where you're going and what the weather is like there. So in Europe, shoulder season is April, May, September, October. The off season? Yeah. Is but like not December, like not off, off, not January. Shoulder but like, season. Oh, like it's the still edge nice, of the, right, yeah. right, 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 right. It's right. still nice weather. Yeah. And beautiful, but like the kids are back in school. It's like September for the beaches or, or the cottages and shit. Yeah, it's you like, can yeah, get great deals. They're all gone, but it's still nice out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So September, Shoulder October for that. me, there's like key travel months in Europe specifically. Yeah. And then like, yeah, April, May. Because like we're in Paris, July 30th, which is insane. I mean. But next week is like the best week to come. Is yeah, I guess closed? all the, the Parisians go off to Marseille or something. Yeah, I wonder how it'll be with all this. this sh- I heard like tons of shops and restaurants closed. Yeah, I know. So it'll be like, oh, nothing's open. We got to we gotta eat a bunch today. Yeah. <laughs> this area will stay open. <laughs> Um, I went to a restaurant, a breakfast restaurant, Holy Belly. They said they have two locations, and okay. they like shut one down and then shut the other one down and swap. So they can, okay, like, take their vacation. That makes sense. That's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Smart. Um, so then you're going. Are you still scared at this point? No. Oh yeah, I was gonna say. So I, I rented that car and drove across the country, and I was I was terrified. I was terrified of driving alone across a foreign country. Italy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just Italy, right? It wasn't like. Other places Still. I've I've since driven in on a mopeds and like risked my life, right. um, but like I ended up in this farm. I mean, just talk about like the negatives too. Like I ended up in this farm stay. I was the only guest because it was off season, and it was a little tiny town. There was like really nothing to do, and like I guess for diligent introvert writers, which I'm not, <laughs> um, that would be great. But I started like getting really just like there's no one here and I'm in the middle of nowhere oh, and yeah. like it just really wasn't that, Isn't that fine. funny like that's kind of what you wanted to be alone yeah exactly and then you're like get there you're like oh there's more to it than I realized yeah it was oh, just some loneliness or there's yeah some, like, fear. wow yeah interesting yeah yeah so that wasn't that that pleasant but yeah regarding fear yeah I get I get yeah I'm afraid yeah yeah sure I still get afraid what? of going to certain places or doing certain things. Not just the fear of getting attacked or something. I'm saying, like, what are the other fears of, like, n- n- not finding something to do? Like, I don't know. What, what are the other fears? The uh, Airbnb host not showing up, and then you have to sleep outside on the street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shit like that. Exactly. <laughs> Where it's like, fuck. I, I recently went paragliding in Montenegro, and I thought I was going to die. Really? Yeah. Why? Because it's like it was <laughs> paragliding. Yeah, you know no, it was that? terrifying. Is that the where well, you have to run and then go like? Yeah, that. you have to run. All I see and- is videos of them going, <laughs> <laughs> catching a gust. Yeah, yeah, you have to run off a cliff, basically. The same with hang gliding, which I did in Rio, which was like. Wait, hang gliding is what I'm thinking of. Hang gliding has the the thing. The, yeah, like the the triangle that you put your yes. legs on and you just like it's over you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What paragliding, thing? you're like sitting down and there's an. Uh, parachute and it pulls dealy. you it it lets oh, you know. yeah. hang okay, in the okay. air as you you're like, like sitting comfortably right. back so paragliding i find less scary than hang gliding but this particular experience i was in montenegro i found this company that was highly rated i was going to plan i was there with a bunch of other nomads yeah because we just had a conference in croatia and then a bunch of us had a reunion in montenegro which is not too far um and I was trying to set up something for all of us to do together, like in a few days from then. And paragliding apparently is the, some, the thing to do in Montenegro. I don't know why. Um, so I called these guys and they did not speak English. They were these really cute twin brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, barely spoke English, but they were like, yeah, we're free. Like, we want to go now. Like, can you go in an hour? And I was like, <laughs> I'm wearing my bathing suit. I was like at a cafe in uh, Budva. You're like, nah, dog, no. Like, with my swimsuit and, like, a little sundress, you know? I'm like, I'm not prepared mentally or <laughs> in any way. And he's like, yeah, we're going in an hour. Like, we'll pick you up. Like, where are you? I'm like, oh, my God. And, like, this is my personality. It's like, just do it. Like, you have to do it or you're Damn. not going to do it. So, like, I always throw myself into the fire because that's my, like, life philosophy. Mm-hmm. Um, because so otherwise you you're not. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, pick me up. Like, if I get an opportunity too like that, I can't say no. Too frightening. Plus, I'd be I like... I can't say no. Really? No. 
I'd also be like, what are your safety measures in this? Oh country? yeah, no, no. What, how much? How much does this cost? No. Ten dollars? That doesn't seem like a safety amount. <laughs> yeah. Seems oh. like I should pay three hundred for this. I think I only paid fifty. Yeah, where you're like, it's, no way you're abiding by any sort. When's the last time yeah. you had a death? And what, are you obligated to tell me? Well, the thing is, if they're alive, then no one died. Because, like, they're with you. Right. They're with you on it. So, like, oh, okay. that's their safety record. They're like, we're here. We're alive are they still. Ba- are they in, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, how long have you been doing this? 16 years. I'm like, okay, whatever. Okay. But the scary thing, I've gone paragliding before in Medellin. If he's like uh, my four, bro- uh, excuse me, three brothers. Um, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> we work quintuplets. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're, now we're only twins. <laughs> <laughs> You're like it's all right. He was, uh, <laughs> it was the shortest one. Doesn't matter. Yeah, right. No loss. Um, yeah. So we. So I went with these like. Oh, and then I was waiting for these guys to pick me up, and then they they show up. They're like three dudes in a car that come pick me up. Yeah. Do you want to close that? I'm gonna close. There's a curtain. Why don't you close? Yeah. Okay. I just want to get the top part. Yeah. No, all the sun went away. Go ahead. Keep going. Um, so these three dudes picked me up Perfect. in their car and I squeezed in the back again, like no one spoke English. I'm like, where are we going? Like we're going. So we started driving up this mountain outside of Budva and just like winding our way up the top of this mountain. And I was like getting more and more nervous because I could see Budva. It's on the ocean. Damn. It's a really beautiful like bay on the in ocean Columbia? Near, near in Montenegro. Sorry, oh, okay. that was the first time I went paragliding was Medellin, and that was fine. I felt totally safe. Yeah. And there you run off a hill, and then you're like over a valley, and then you land where you started, which was like nice. That's how I thought things happened. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, cool. you like go off, and you're like flying above a valley, and then you eventually go back to the hill that you jumped off of. Weird. So you can like go up. Um, so you jump off the cliff, hang out like this, and then you just go back to the top of the cliff. What, doesn't gravity Hell. pull you away from the top? Um, no, because the wind oh, catches wow. in the parachute. Yeah. I'd be scared. I think that's what it's called. I don't I'd know what it's called. I'd be scared. Yeah, yeah, it's terrifying. So, But this experience was more terrifying because we got to this like rocky, and there was nothing. There was no infrastructure. In Medellin, it was like a whole building and like lots of pilots and like lots of people doing this and like a cafe with water. And But in Montenegro, it was literally like some rocks in the middle of the woods. It was like yeah. a rocky um, like parking lot, it looked like. And then I went with this guy uh, and he's like, okay, here, get in this thing. And you have to like, I don't know, get into this little like suit type of thing. Um, and he's like, okay, like practice running. And so I started running. He's like, yeah, he's like, okay, you have to do it that fast. I'm like, okay. And I wasn't even prepared. He was just like, go. He's like, you have to just run. N- like, like now? Yeah, now. Like they didn't really, yeah. Cause there was another guy I thought he was going to go first and like, no. And he was like, run. And I'm like, what? And so I start running. And the scary thing was the highway we had just come up on. It was right there. So we were running off a cliff and the highway was just below. So you're like, I'm going to... So if we didn't make it, like, we could have died from the fall or being I run mean, over. how do they think people aren't going to just go, no, I can't at the last second and just like... Just I, I, the- I would have done that if I already hadn't started running and the wind had already picked up on the sand and there was no... The point of no return. Yeah. So I was... So, <laughs> there's actually a GoPro video of me <laughs> in the first 10 minutes I'm doing like Lamaze breathing. I'm like... <laughs> 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 I'm like I'm really like oh this is this is it dude like, every time one of those things where they're like just go like scuba diving like go down and right like, I'm a little like go 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 because like you've done this a billion times I need to work up the fucking courage dude scuba people should not be saying go 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> just go just go or they'll like t- grab you I'm like don't you fucking pull me down no that those are not allowed <sighs> have you gone scuba diving <laughs> I think I think yeah, but I, I try to save money, so I go with like you just make blow up your own balloons and just kind of like breathe into them. Um, damn. Okay. So then, wait, why are we talking about this paragraph? Um, fear. Oh, right, right, right. So you just go and get just over. Like, it. are you still afraid? I'm like, yeah, I'm afraid all the time. How long did it take you on the road? So you're staying mostly in Airbnbs, no hostels, some hostels. I try to avoid Airbnb, to be honest with you. Why? Um. I had a really kind of frightening experience happen. My very first, that the first stop on my nomad journey that's now been six years, um, this apartment in London, um, the owner had left and like they're renting out their whole apartment, but they're renting out one room to me and one room to other random Airbnbers. So there's no host present, but it was me and like some other guests sharing 
like the common space and like two rooms. Like, right? I don't know who that guy is. So that that kind of freaked me out at first. It was a couple that were in town for like a punk concert or something. And then, um, but the scary thing that I really didn't like was like they were supposed to move out the next day. Yeah. And it was like four in the morning and I heard some, like people come into the apartment and they were in the apartment and they were like, they had basically squatted because like, they were supposed it. to put the keys in the box and leave, but they like were illegally squatting basically. Mm. And then I was terrified because I didn't know actually who it was. I assumed it was the people from the night before, but I didn't know. And my door, my bedroom door didn't have a lock. And I'm like, this really sucks. If you're renting out two different rooms, it's two different hotel rooms. You got to yeah. put locks on the doors. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. And so I complained at Airbnb the next day and they, they just like really, really, they were, yeah, they were yeah. like, they said they had to come back in to get their passport that they left. I'm like, they are lying to you. Why would you believe these two people Air, who are like squatting? Airbnb, what do you mean? They said. And not me. Yeah. They totally took their side of like side of it. Like, I'm like, I was there. I heard them coughing all night. Like, they were definitely there sleeping. Well, they, are you calling them a liar? I'm like, everybody, you don't even know them, dude. <laughs> you don't, Why know. are you taking some stranger stuff? Yeah. He completely discounted my concern. And I think it was just really, really disappointing. Because, so I mean, try they, not to use them anymore? companies they're... like that, they, I mean, there has to be some element of, like, safety measures. And yeah. the fact that they did it. Yeah, you ever get a company like, I'm really sorry about that. Refund your money. Make sure that never happened because that was, yeah, that was terrible. Exactly. I, I can't. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I can deal with you again. You fucked up and owned up to it. It was how they treated me more than like any amount of money I wanted back. It was mm -hmm. really, yeah, they totally just dismissed my concerns. But it was like a young tech bro working in Airbnb customer service, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I try not to use them, but I've used them probably a hundred times since. I mean, yeah. I try not to. What else do you do? How I, I like booking.com. Booking ruins hotels. Why? They, they force them to be on booking, taking a lower rate. They have to give them 30%. The hotels have to give booking.com oh. 30%. So like all these hotels are like, we can't survive now without booking.com because no one will find us. Mm. And then we just give up 30% of our shit. Plus, booking.com does this thing where they just sell stuff. Like Garrett had that. Mm. He's like, they sold me a room with a hotel that closed a year ago. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? And he goes, it was just it permanently closed. And he gets there and like, what the fuck? And and, and then he called booking. I was like, well, you got to contact the, the business. And he goes, oh. there is no business. And they're like, well, they never uh, closed up with us. I'm like, why would they? They're done. Oh, my God. And they're like, sir, it's, you got to contact them. And he's just like, there is no them. Also, even if there was, I'm telling you, you didn't have my reservation. Like, right. Just, ugh. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, all, well, I didn't know that. But okay. do, I, mean, I found yeah. a hotel for tomorrow That's through nice. booking, so thank you. Yeah. Um, in Asia, I'll try to do is I'll, I'll find someone on booking.com and yeah. then I'll call the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've done like, that Can a I lot. get at least this rate? Yeah. I've yeah. done that a lot. Um, and then Agoda is really good in Asia. Agoda is really good. Reason, yeah. I've used everything. I mean, I've stayed on boats. I've stayed in... And you you're know, not really doing hostels anymore? I, like in Japan, I spent a month in Japan. I yeah. bought that um, high-speed rail ticket. You know, you can buy... Uh -uh. You can buy a one, two, or three week train pass, uh, good for anywhere around Japan, but you have to buy it. It's only for foreigners, and you have to buy oh, it really? when you're out before you go to Japan. Uh, it's a great deal. I think it's like half what locals pay. Wow. How much? Um, like how much? I don't remember yeah. at all. Maybe $300. And you just go anywhere whenever? $300 for like three weeks. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty good. That's and they have like amazing trains there. So, um, so I went and I just bummed around, but, um, I mean, Japan is pretty expensive. So, like Kyoto, like places like that are pretty expensive. So, I did stay in hostels, like in cash. Kyoto and like yeah. some other towns I went to. I feel like hostels you can get used to, but like you gotta like there's a a five or six day like curve of like mm. okay, fine, shitty mattresses, mm. it's noisy people. And I did the pods, you know, the pod hostels, no. where they're like little. I call them like little coffins. <laughs> they're like little coffin rooms, like stacked on top of each other. Uh. And so. Like there's the bottom row and the top row, and there's like a there's like a little ladder up to my little, like <laughs> literally you can't even sit up in it. You just kind of like throw yourself in. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was fine. That's cool. That was fine. Um, what is so then? At some point, I always find like you, you're not. You go from like being gone from a place to just being where you are. You know. Like, I'm here in, in Paris, but, like, I'm still, like, I'm on vacation from New York. Oh, right. You know? But you have a home. Right. But if I went from here to, like, Rolf's going to Norway. Right. You know? And 
And at some point you're like, well, I'm leaving Paris where I'm also not from. So now it's almost like, I don't know where it is, but at some point you're like, oh, I'm just floating now. I'm mm. just free. I'm not, mm. I'm not, I'm not, my experience is not from a tether, <clears throat> you know? Yeah. It's like looking forward almost instead of back. How long did it take for you to get like that? Yeah. If you understand what I'm saying. I d- totally do. Um, uh, I want to say like nine months. I don't know why. Nine months. Okay. Yeah. Guess. <laughs> I kind of like hit my stride after nine months, which I think a lot of people like laugh at. Like it took that long. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by your stride? Um, uh, like the first nine months. I mean, I didn't even know what a digital nomad was. Also, I just started freelance consulting. I just started my freelance business while I also started traveling. Yeah. I would definitely recommend not doing that at the same time because there's so much fun to be had right and you're like yes i gotta work i can't do both yes but also like starting a business even if it's like a freelance business um i mean that takes a lot of work and effort to do it right Mm -hmm. um and then also becoming a nomad and traveling every two weeks and travel planning that's a part-time job so what i'm saying is just it's like too much at the same time oh right if someone is interested in doing this but you have like a regular job i would say like start your side business now like start your graphic design business or your website business, your social media consulting business, whatever it is on the side after work, you know? And then yeah, once, still, once you're yeah. making enough money from that, you know, then you don't want to be like, take finding out, like how do I find Wi-Fi in Bucharest while you're, while your clients are like, yeah, where is exactly. that article that you promise? Yeah. Right. Right. So yeah, it took me about nine months to, um, well, I actually didn't, I don't know. I didn't even like know about Digital Nomad. I feel like more people know about it now. Not the groups, but just the idea of it. Because yeah, everyone became one during, during COVID. Oh, so yeah. Like, so now it's like, oh. And people are like, hey, let's not go back to work. And so then they're like, well, why do I live? We had people that worked at Facebook next to me in New York. Yeah. And they're sent home. And at yeah. some point they were like, hey, let's move to Austin. They had a kid. Yeah. And they were like, why are we here? So they just right. moved. They moved. Yeah, that happened a lot. But I was doing this four years before right, the pandemic. Right, before I was even thinking about it. Yeah. Um. But for nine months, I didn't even know, like, someone would call me a digital nomad. I didn't even know. The term. And I also didn't know, like, if you go to Lisbon for the first time and you're alone, that you can, like, they're groups. You know, you can do, like, now that's blown up. But, you know, they're digital nomad, nomad meetups. Groups. Right. Yeah, they're Facebook groups. They're, like, Digital Nomads Italy Facebook group. Digital Nomads Lisbon Facebook group. They have Tinder meetups for, like, just friends. They're like a bunch of people are in town. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, instead of trying to meet some chick in this town to show you around, just like, hey, yeah. Just like, we're already using the site. Yeah, right. Tinder BFF or something. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it seems very yeah. gay on every level of that yeah. word. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, but it, I mean, you need to find people. Yeah, and I, I wasn't doing a great job of that, honestly. <laughs> the first, I mean, the first couple stops, I had friends. I had friends in London and Glasgow yeah. and Venice, blah, blah, blah. But like after that trip, well, after the road trip solo, I got really lonely because then I didn't have a plan and then I did end up going to Lisbon and I liked it a lot and I ended up staying for six weeks and I had actually had a friend from New York visit me there for Thanksgiving. That helps. And I had a friend who ended up there, but um, I mean now I have a million friends there, but then, you know, it really wasn't that like kicking. Um, but That is why I like hostels. What yeah, yeah, like yeah. It's because like you will meet people. Totally, yeah, yeah. And like I would stay in more hostels. It's not like a snobbery thing. Like I would love to save more money. I'm really sensitive to noise, and I like I cannot sleep with people like rustling through a plastic bag at five in the morning, which yeah. undoubtedly happens every Just time you stay in a hostel. Like, find something, and you're like, exactly. What do you use your cell phone? Exactly. Like, Thank you. Exactly. So that's the only reason. But a lot of hostels have single rooms, which is mm-hmm. a great budget option. And then you can meet people in the common space. Right. That's where I find you don't meet anybody in the dorm because it's pretty much shut the fuck up at all hours. <laughs> you know, Hopefully if you're lucky. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's right. But like so breakfast. You, you is, need to get out of the sun. <laughs> yeah, I keep it through just so it doesn't burn, burn me. I don't know. Do you want to put that shade down? Uh, I like it with a light. Okay. Yeah. You know. It's look like you're like burning up. Is it above my <laughs> neckline? <laughs> Okay, that'll work. Um, yeah, so that's what I was gonna ask you: the loneliness, like m- making friends. Yeah, because like where you when you live somewhere, it just happens. You make friends, and then yeah. they're always there. You might not even like your friends sometimes, but it's at least like they are your friends, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
with the traveling and the nomading, like, mm-hmm. okay, so you're in Lisbon for six weeks, let's just say. Mm-hmm. Um, you start meeting people after a week, you know, and then like after another week and a half after that, you start like, I re- oh, I'm really meshing with this one. And so now you're friends for like three weeks and you're like, okay, bye. Mm-hmm. Unless the, uh, if they're locals, if they might leave before you if they're also travelers. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the level of loneliness would, would concern me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has that been hard? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a it's a real thing. Um, what I have noticed lately is people are extremely afraid of loneliness, and I I am not. Oh. Like I don't think it's healthy to be so afraid of loneliness. You mean being alone or loneliness? The feeling of loneliness. Okay. Um, I had a friend reach out to me because her friend is a new nomad right post pandemic yeah. nomad who they were like picking my brain you know like wh- where should she go what should she do um she's like she's really desperately afraid of being feeling lonely and i was like okay i can't help you with that like you you know you have to like sit in your own loneliness yeah didn't yasmin say that yesterday this woman we met yesterday walked yasmin? in oh, yasmin jasmine I was yeah. just looking at a spell. You're, you're yeah, for spell sure, right. Jasmine. Yeah. I think she says <laughs> I, Jasmine. Damn, it's okay. Um, but she I know, just I'm walked. like, fuck, I called her the wrong name for fucking hours. I kept going, hey, Jasmine, hey, Jasmine. She was like, oh, me? Yeah, what? I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so now you know it's because you're staying here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it just hit me. I'm like, fucking shit. Yeah. Um, but she just walked part of the Camino de Santiago. What part? All. She Well, there are many trails. She walked oh. the North Trail. Oh. They're like five or six different routes to get from where to where that place, the black place. I mean, whatever to get from like so cool, a start to the, yeah. the, you know, the summit. Yeah. <laughs> but there are like many different trails you can take. Okay. She did Del Norte, which is goes through Bilbao. Um, but what was my point? Oh, so she was talking about loneliness and like <laughs> sitting right. in loneliness. Like that's a meditative walk anyway. But like sometimes she would be really lonely and then she would like reach out to people in whatever town she was staying in and they would have like beers together. Right. Um, But she was saying sometimes like she just sits in the loneliness. And I was like, yes, like people just like they're so afraid of feeling lonely. I'm like, you're that's a huge part of the human experience, though. Like and if you're so afraid of ever feeling a negative emotion, like you're not fully participating in the human experience. Right. Yeah. Like it's it's it just happens. And like. I'm doing what I want to do. I was scuba diving in caves this year. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. I jumped off a cliff in Montenegro. Like I'm in Paris at this writing workshop. Like I'm doing what I want to do. And that is worth stretches of loneliness. Right. So I think don't some people go like, well, don't you get lonely? And like, yeah, but what you're saying is, shouldn't you not have all this awesome because of the one negative or or like, or like, won't you get hungry? I'm like, yeah, (laughs) I will be hungry. And then like, it might be an hour before I eat it. I wish I wasn't hungry. <laughs> yeah. But I'm I'm not going to not go to this fucking awesome thing. Exactly. Yeah. What well, like yeah, I mean imagine if all the negatives like leaving last night having to get on a fucking bike and bike drunk back and like well, wasn't it an annoying bike ride back? I'm like, "Yes. I had a great 6 hours by the Seine River with friends." Like, yeah, I wasn't going to imagine it's like, "Nah, I'm not coming you guys cuz Right. The 20 the last 20 minutes is going to be kind of like right. below average. That was an amazing night. What a fun night. <laughs> what a fun night. That one chick in the overalls. I could not get over you it. You love overalls. Women in overalls, specifically. Like style. She had it. She wasn't even like super attractive or anything. It was just like the confidence to do weird dances. But the first lady you saw in overalls like yeah. five nights ago. Fashion. It's just fashionable. <laughs> the confidence. I love it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> is it a party all the time? Being on Nomad? Or is it this year has been this year has been there's stretches there's stretches I um, quit I had a full time remote job for three years yeah and that was great for a lot of reasons Um, but I ended up leaving in December so I've been like largely unemployed on purpose this year so I mean I do a little bit I've been doing a little bit of freelancing but I've been largely taking a break um and this year in particular, also like people are traveling more this year in 2022. Um, so just there are more things happening. And so like I had a trip to Morocco that I 
you know, paid for and planned to do last fall when I had a job, you know, an income. And it was, you know, at some point there was like another wave and Morocco closed down its airspace. Oh, fuck. So yeah. my trip was moved to March, but I'd already planned to attend this no- nomad conference I love going to called Nomad Base. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite community. It's my favorite, like, regular, regularly occurring nomad meetup that I like to attend. There are a million more. That's just the one I first got into. Um, and so they were having a meetup in Playa del Carmen in January. And then Spain. I Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Okay. Um, in the Yucatan. And I also wanted to get my advanced scuba diving certificate, which was delayed two years because of COVID. Like I which wanted I wanted to get 30? it years ago. I'm sorry? Which one's advanced? Thirty or eighteen? Uh, meters. If meters? Yeah, or is it past thirty? Which one's advanced? I think it's it's more like than thirty meters. One? Yeah. Yeah. Second one. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, you, you go deeper and you, you learn more. You learn like underwater navigation and peak oh, yeah. Peak performance buoyancy. Oh, yeah. It's fun. They make you jump through the hula hoop? No. You know no. Yeah. You set up a hula hoop. And Were they like, like feeding you fish too? <laughs> <laughs> you got to go like do a loop through it like over and under it without like, touching it. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually he was like, all right, we're close enough. Let's go. We're running out of time. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't do that one. Yeah, I know what you're talking about though. <laughs> also, it was a ship. I saw my first shipwrecks this That's year. That's fun. It was it's fun. You really feel cool. like you're expli- an explorer. It was kind of creepy. Where like was when the it? water is murky, and then you see, start seeing the ship, and seeing how massive it is compared to you, that it's freaky. Yeah. There's one in Cozumel, um, and I saw another one in Croatia. The Croatia one was creepy. Like the Cozumel one was planted. Like it was a U.S. That's USS Navy ship. You, uh-huh. you were there too. No, but I planted like it was a U.S. Navy ship. That yeah. They were like, hey, we got to sink it. Right. And then they left it there. Let's and sink now it it's here. like a whatever. It was in Bali, but the same shit. Where yeah. it's like no one blew it up. Yeah. Yeah. But it's down <laughs> it's a good there. Thing. The, yeah. Um, yeah. And then, but the shipwreck in Croatia was really creepy because it was an actual accident. Whoa. And it was like a fishing. I mean, obviously they're. Huge what? part of their economy is fishing, you know. Dead bodies. So it was like a huge. There, no, actually, no one died, which made it less creep, slightly less creepy. Yeah, less creepy. But um, it was really murky water, and then like all of a sudden, you see that you're like floating above this massive wooden ship, and they still had like beer crates, like they still had like personal things in there. Wow, and you're like, do not touch them. You can't take them. Yeah, right. You want to so bad. Yeah. Yeah, that was it was it was creepy. It was fun. So um, so anyway, like that's how I kind of traveled because like the conference was happening in Playa del Carmen, which is only a 20 minute ferry ride from Cozumel. Uh And so I like, you know, you know, I'm like, oh, well, if I'm going to Playa del Carmen, like what else can I do? And I'm like, oh, I can finally get my advanced scuba diving. And and, you know what I mean? So like if I'm in a place, I take advantage of that. That's that's, okay. So that's a general thing. Like I'm in here. What else should I do while I'm in there? Who will be back? Right. Like live life. Yeah. Grab it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, after Playa, a lot of us stayed, you know, in the Yucatan for a few more weeks. And I did, I ended up doing like a lot of cenote scuba diving, which is terrifying because you're like, what is that one? You know, cenotes, nope. they're like, um, they're, I, they're caves full of water in, and it only happens in the Yucatan because they have like this limestone material. Um, and basically they're. I'm not doing a great job explaining it. Some are totally open, which are, look like pools or lakes that people go swimming in. And some are completely closed still and like undiscovered. And the water comes through. But then eventually like the limestone top or the ground starts receding and then you get like this hole and then it gets bigger and bigger. And so there are a lot of caves with like some light coming in, wow. but they're all full of water because it's at the water Seeps level. The yeah. yeah, it's at the water level. So a lot of people go scuba diving in these like dark caves that are full of water. Yeah. Which that was, that was also another terrifying thing. That's, I did. Yeah. But I'm like, I always wanted to do it. I always wanted to do it. And you know, I was going to be in the area. So I know you can't, you, you can't just like, fuck this. I'm going up. I know you can't do that, but you'll get the bends. Yeah. But at least I want that option. <laughs> I don't want to be like, it's, there is no, up. there's a, there's a cave roof. It's it's terrifying. I actually Damn, didn't dude. know Damn. that I was going to be in like a dark cave where you could not see yeah. any natural light coming in or out. Yeah, keep going. <coughs> um, so that was like a fun surprise when I got in the cave <laughs> that there was actually like no no light. 
light. Fuck. <laughs> Would you use flashlight? Yeah. Wow. We, we each got a flashlight given Damn. to us. Um, yeah, that's pretty wild. So that's the kind of shit you do while you're like, I mean, it is. That's what I mean. Oh, that's what the question was. It, is it like a party or you're actually doing stuff? It seems like you're just constantly active. <laughs> that was your original question, huh? Yeah. I guess what I was saying is like this year for me, um, ten, like it has been very social because a lot of these events I had planned uh, were happening again. Right. So my point was like, I already had a ticket to Playa del Carmen and then also a room in Mexico City where I'd never been. And then I had to go to Morocco like soon after that, which is like silly. I mean, I was loving Mexico. I probably would have stayed there for six months. I mean, but like I, my trip to Morocco was postponed and then it was moved to March. So then just this year has been crazy. I've been wow. like going all around too fast. People are for catching me, it's up. too fast. People are catching up for sure. Well, that's what it is. Like revenge travel. Right? And like everybody who wanted to go in, in like March of 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then everyone's like, okay, this thing will be passed. And so I'll get my ticket. Someone else, some new person is like, I want to go in April 2020, 2021. Mm. And then all the late 2021. And it's like they all just came together. Mm. They've all been waiting. Mm. So now it's on. <laughs> By the way, that's why music festivals are sloppy now. Really? Because people are like, I've been waiting to do drugs. <laughs> it's like they're just going for it. No one knows their tolerance anymore. Uh, um, what are these uh, nomad conferences? What are those? Mm. The one I go to, Nomad Base, um, it's about a week. So, uh, and every day it's all day of uh, like uh, keynote talks, basically about, lectures. About like you know? how to live with yeah. no base? Yeah, yeah. I mean, no anchor. So, they're mostly about entrepreneurship actually and business because like it's for nomads, right? So, the assumption is you're already nomads, the people in the audience are nomads. Right. So, you don't need like how to pack, you know, you don't well, you re- should go. You don't really it's, need it's that done. stuff because yeah. we're like already nomads. Uh, but a lot of it is like how to scale your business. Or how to hire someone remotely, mm, or how to like increase your SEO, how to do real estate investing when you don't have a home yourself, like how to get into real estate investing. A lot of crypto talks. Oh yeah. A lot. Um, how to stay healthy on the road. You know. Also, like that would be a big one. Mindsets. He has a lot of mindset stuff and productivity stuff and. That would be a big one. How to stay healthy yeah. on the road. I yeah. can see that. I can see helpful ones. They had this guy who did like stand up comedy classes slash self help shit in one. And me and all the comedians were just like, this is fucking lame. He's charging people like 1500 bucks for, for what? Like, open my comics to like take this class. Wow. And he'd have like speakers. And I was just there at the comedy store picking up a mm. check. Mm. And somebody walked by, Biff from, um, um, you know who I'm talking about? No. From uh, Back to the Future. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, I must not know who you're talking about because. Oh, I'm my God, this. what? Yeah, so he's there. I never met him. Um, I think he might have died. <laughs> the Maybe real one? The real one. Yeah, he's a stand up comic, I guess. <laughs> no way. Yeah, he was gone from LA by the time I met him. But anyway, anyway, so he was there and I was like, what are you telling? What are you going to tell these people? Mm. These open micers. And he's like, well, I'm telling them that if they're going to be in this, come here for a while, and you're definitely going to do a lot of drugs, so you got to be careful when you do these drugs. <laughs> and I'm like, that is good advice. <laughs> that's better than like, here's how to write a joke. It's yeah. like, oh, that's <laughs> usable advice. You're right, okay. <laughs> yeah, if I was giving a talk to someone, I was like, hey listen, if your friend's ex comes on to you, it's just not worth it. Yeah. That I've seen too many friendships break up. Right. Just fuck a hooker, do, do something else. A lot of people out there. Yeah, we're yeah. like, someone needs to tell these people something. <laughs> um. So yeah, so you have all these, and so just meeting up like-minded people, like other travelers. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So this year I did two Nomad conferences um, with the same company, Nomad Base. We had one in Croatia as well, and then two weeks later we had a meetup in Montenegro, which I already mentioned. Um, and then the Morocco trip was with El Camino Travel, yeah. which is like an incredible travel company for immersive experiences. Um, and this particular trip was really focused on meeting artisans, you know, like real artisans in, in Marrakesh, and like seeing their studios and like going to their you know workplaces and it was really 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 cool i never do group trips but um i've followed el camino travel for years it's woman run uh woman owned and it's just really cool and so the people i met were amazing so like i met all these amazing people in mexico croatia all these people in morocco and then this, this travel memoir workshop. I love these people that we've we met. We've been drinking nonstop. And I'm not That's... a I can drink with strangers guy. Oh, really? No. You did a great job. Aren't you? Yeah. You know why? <laughs> it's because they're job. all like-minded. 
So yeah. it's immediately like it sounds like what those nomad conferences are. It's like yeah. I my first did my vagabonding trip. Yeah. It was I was worried about meeting people and whatever. Yeah. Um, I do this thing where I'm like I have to get lonely to be social. Oh really? Yeah, I need to go to where it's like. We're like, I'm not just going to settle for food, but when I'm so hungry, they're like, fuck it, I'll eat at a truck stop. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Where it's like, I, I need to get myself to the place of like, I'll take a chance, that, you know, out of my comfort zone. So like, that uh, first trip to like, uh, China to, to do the comedy, it was like three or four days of walking around alone. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, I'm like, well, what's the local comedian? Mm-hmm. Like, Guys, let's hang out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, because I need to fill it. Mm-hmm. Um, so... What was I going to say? Oh, so generally, that's why I'm glad I came here. I came here like three days early. So I'm like, I'm just walking around alone. And then when I met you guys, oh, this is what my advice was. I was dating some chick and she goes, um, sounds rude for no reason. <laughs> woman? <laughs> yeah, this woman probably. I was dating. was She goes, uh, hey, anything you do, it's going to be with other people that are interested in doing that thing. Right. Yeah, right. You know? So yeah, right. you already have something in common with them. And they're going to be doing that in Thailand or Cambodia. Right, so right. it's a double thing in common. It's not some random that's next to you on a, you know, on the subway. Right. It's you have very much in common with all these people. Right. So it sounds like the Nomad Conference would just be that. Like, where totally. have you been? I'm talking about Morocco. Totally. And like, you're telling someone who is interested yeah. in Morocco about Morocco. Yeah. Oh, they do sound fun. So do you guys so, drink on stuff? So this year has been a party. Yeah. It's not always a party. I mean, my job I had was intense and um, I was living in Berlin for 15 months during the that, beginning of the pandemic and um you already there was, had there was been? no party there was like no party you already had been living there 15 months no no, no. so now yeah i was in Is berlin when covid started and so i just like for a couple different reasons ended up staying in berlin for like almost a year and a half uh-huh. so there's like no party yeah, like they, no yeah. party i was sober for three years and i was working really hard and Everything was closed. Everything Not fun. <laughs> um, uh, everything that's fun to do in Berlin, like you, your experiences yeah. in Berlin, they were all closed. Damn, it's right? a drug town for sure. I'm sure that did not close down. I just don't okay. really do drugs, but um, yeah. I have. I have. I've matured already. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, that was like a quiet period. Damn. So and maybe I'm having my revenge travel too. Maybe that's what the six months has been. I'm having revenge party time. Was 15 months as long as you had been in one spot? Oh yeah, I was 11 once in one apartment in Berlin, which is the longest I've stayed anywhere in six years. Damn, COVID was hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In six years, mm-hmm. are you stay? Are you gonna stay there? Or are you gonna take off? I don't have a place in Berlin, um, but I do have a visa there. It's good for another year. So, oh, yeah. how do you get that? Germany's cool about it. Yeah, uh, it's an artist visa. Wow, which you could get actually. I technically am an artist. You, as you long would, as they don't look into how you, dumb my material is, <laughs> then they I, they might qualify. I was at a music festival in Ottawa with my friend Big Jay Okerson. Um, it's really bad dressing stand-up comedian and. Um, and he's like, oh, let's see if we can go to like the the um, the sound booth, which is like right in the middle of the crowd. Mm. And he's just like, they built this little tower mm. above. Um, or backstage, I think. And he was like, we can get, like, we have artists pass to go backstage. And I was like, no, but we're not we're not artists. He was like, yeah, we are. <laughs> and he's like, won't they know? He goes, that's not knowing. We are. We're doing, we're performing at this festival. But I'm like, but they mean musicians. And he goes, what are you talking about? Oh have God. some self-respect. No, they don't mean that. They mean anyone performing. That's so and funny. And we're like, like this like does this work and they're like yeah yeah go ahead when was this what 20 like 15 or something okay you still didn't think you're an artist (laughs) no yeah (laughs) but i was like not like on that level um so they give artist visas out in berlin i would say they give them out i would Uh, say you have to like fight tooth and nail and eventually get it and then it's worth it but no they don't like hand them out like drugs on the street (laughs) which they do (laughs) and i get it if i was like what do i have to what would i have to do Look at me for a second instead of you, just for a second. What if I like did, did like stand up on TV in Germany? Would that like be like cool? You qualify? Do you have to like show some expertise? Or yeah. do you just go like? I can tell you I what's required. It? I mean, I have yeah. There's there's a lot. Um, there's an application. You have to get a couple of recommendation forms from from companies in Germany saying they would hire you if they could. But they can't. 
they can't yet because you don't have right. the artist visa. Interesting. So like you could reach out to people in Berlin who I guess run comedy shows or like theater, you know, perf- uh-huh. like venues and probably find two people who would write you letters of recommendation. Then you have to submit a portfolio of some kind. I know. That'd be embarrassing. Yeah. But I don't. Yeah. Some bureaucrat going. And also I really mm-hmm. doubt they can watch clips because it's like really old school. Everything is like on paper and they like still mail everything in the mail. Oh yeah. In Berlin. It's wild. Wow. They're, it's, <laughs> wow, it's a modern They do city. nothing digitally. Nothing Damn. by email. Um, so yeah. I mean somehow you'd put together a portfolio and uh yeah, some other stuff. CV. Costs victory? Probably not. Probably does not stand for that. Curriculum vitae, like resume. Oh, Latin. <laughs> um, interesting. Do you have a resume? No. Yeah. But I could make one. <laughs> I've copied them before. <laughs> um, anyway, I can help you. I filled those out I for can other help people. You. My friend was trying to get Canadian into yeah, America. Yeah, yeah. And I had to fill out a letter. be like, no one... Uh, I need an opener. She meshes with me perfectly. No one I've been able to find. You just have to flower it up. I can help you with this. Okay. I will t- probably take you up on that. I'm going uh, to Berlin in a week. You what? <laughs> I'm going to Berlin in a week. Um, <laughs> if you want to come and get your application started. <laughs> You're like, here's the paperwork to buy. Um, what did your friends and family say when you were like, I'm leaving forever? <laughs> <laughs> Peace. Yeah. <laughs> Peace out. So I thought I was going for six months. You thought you were going for six months or a year max. So I was like, if I'm lucky, it'll be a year. Freedom of when to come back. I say one way ticket, but again, I fly standby, so like oh, all my trips okay. are kind of like one way. Mm-hmm. Um, That's nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I don't think I could be doing this if I I couldn't be traveling as much as I travel. You have to take more without trains. Without that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone there. No, the window opened a little bit. <laughs> someone in my apartment. Nice um, so. Yeah. So, what did your friends and family say? They just assumed you'd be coming home. Yeah, and I did too. I did too. Um, they so, were happy for me. Um, they were happy for me. They were supportive. I had like a little going away party at a wine bar in Portland, and two of my friends brought their like newborns. And that was like Ugh, a good sign, <laughs> right? A good like, oh shit! Did you just say ew? I guess I did. <laughs> I didn't even think of it, but yeah, it came out naturally. Oh my god! It came out um, I guess for me it was just like a, an interesting. Uh, hold on to a fucking wine bar. <laughs> Leave your goddamn kid at home. It's Portland. Ugh, it's Portland. We're not meeting at a park. It's Portland. A yeah. lot of stuff goes. <laughs> um. But yeah, I guess what I was saying is like it was a clear visualization of like the two paths someone could take or mm-hmm. I could take, I could have taken, you know? Yeah. And like that looks really cozy and nice, you know, to be married and have a kid and like, I don't know. Right. Have like a normal life, have like a house and mortgage and stuff. And then it was like me <laughs> like doing yeah. this crazy thing. So it was, it was just an interesting. It was like a celebration of you not getting their lives. <laughs> like let's if drink you, some wine and me run away from if you want to this, put it that way from these things i don't look at it that way because i also wanted to get married and have kids at one point so uh-huh. but it's kind of like yeah it just didn't happen so david the other nomad in our class yeah um older gentleman i know david um I'm trying to think how to describe him that's what i mean but uh, he, he uh, said <laughs> he was living in the big island hawaii and playing golf a lot like he had kind of retired there he was a journalist he's a really cool guy Journalist. He's a journalist who yeah. had a death in the family. Uh huh. He's Go. already li- moved. He'd already moved out of Hawaii. Yeah, he was from somewhere in the U.S. and then moved to Hawaii mm-hmm. and like traveled a bit when he had a family, like a wife and kids and a job. You know, yeah. he traveled around. But he said he was having fun. Yeah. Tropical. You know, it's beautiful. Yeah. I asked him like, did you ever get used to it? Where you're like you're just going to work trudging, you don't realize the gorgeous mountains behind you and the palm yeah. trees. And he was like, no, you still noticed it. You, you started taking it for granted a little bit, but you still it still was better than smog, for sure. <laughs> better than smog. Yeah. yeah. But he goes, and you know your friends are like, want to play golf, like sure. And he goes, I just, he was like, I saw a straight road to death, to like, oh, I'm gonna play golf every day, eat at the same restaurants have this same group of friends and it's just it's going to be that all the way till there is no more and he was like i don't i don't want that so Hmm. let's change the road so at least i can't see to the end of it wow um and now he lives in tbilisi 
No, he's a nomad like me. Yeah, he's staying in Tbilisi right now. Right. I'm yeah. staying in Paris right now. <laughs> so did you have any of that where it's like those people that have kids and you're like, I feel like they can see the path to the end. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And part of it, part of me um, is jealous of that. Like part of me wishes I wanted a life like that yeah. more. You know? Yeah. Um, but I just don't. But I'm like very happy and supportive of my friends who are married and have kids. Like, they're doing great. I'm happy yeah. for them. Um, but I'm happy for me too. <laughs> yeah, I hyperventilate every time my friends like, you know, I'm like, I got my wife pregnant. I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck are you gonna do? That's so much responsibility. Oh my god, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> um, can can you when you're gone like this? That's one question I really want to get to, but. Let's matter of fact shit first. Time. Okay. It's our first free day. How do you deal with doctor visits? That's hard. That's hard. There is some stuff about this lifestyle that really sucks and is really hard. Like, for example, yeah. I am here in Paris. I'm supposed to, I have a train ticket to Berlin tomorrow. I'm supposed to be in Berlin. Um, and there is an advanced travel memoir workshop next week with our friend, Ralph Potts, your friend. Somebody got COVID. My new friend. Spot opened up she got like trapped in LAX. She got like lost oh, in LAX yeah. and like couldn't, <laughs> couldn't get out for like, I don't know some, for some reason this, she said LA. It wasn't like I got, lo I got stopped. I got stopped in LA. Or right. Something. It was like LAX. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like what's going on at LAX? <laughs> yeah. You can't get out. What do you mean? You can't get out. Some terror stack. Talk to you later. Anyway, the point is free up. <laughs> something spot. happened. This woman can't come spot open. Ralph Potts, my like total idol, um, per, you know, told me personally, there's a spot open and of course I'm like, uh Yeah, I saw you we were at the bar. Uh and you're like, Oh my god! It's yeah. not open. And you're like, Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. But my point I guess is like I I use daily contacts and I am I'm running out. Oh, I have okay. and I have contacts waiting for me in Berlin. And I have two days left of contacts. But I was gonna be in Berlin tomorrow and I would have my box, right? Like I cannot see without them. Um and I don't like wearing glasses outside in the summer because it's like bright and sunny and like yeah. and plus i like ride my bike a lot in berlin and i it, for me it's just not fun to wear eyeglasses with yeah, sure yeah glasses suck. I had huh? surgery i'm sorry i had surgery i get it oh you did yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i would like to have that it's on my list <laughs> i could try it it's on my want. list <laughs> you could try <laughs> yeah, it great be free just maybe to, after to a couple work drinks work my portfolio a couple drinks yeah okay. exactly um <laughs> <laughs> Zylie and Ari go back to his place to fucking work on her eyes i i felt like i thought it was like a <laughs> Some sort of double on top but no no she's blind now he he sh there's some we should have stopped him um <laughs> she was like i ah, fucking do both eyes at once i'm like you sure you want me to just try on one eye first <laughs> eh, in for a dollar in for a oh my god um yeah so um i have to like today i guess have to go find an ophthalmologist and like try to find contacts somewhere in paris i don't know um but yeah i also yeah like Doctor, it's really hard. Like, also in Portland now, my dentist is booking out three months in advance. And, like, I don't know when I'm going to be in Portland. Right. Like, yeah. yeah, I don't so know. I don't, I don't know, know when I'm going to be home. So, like, I usually go home for, you know, certain holidays or, like, my mom's 70th birthday is coming up. So, like, I know I'm going to be there. So then I'm, like, making my appointments now in July for October in Portland because I have my favorite dentist, which right. sounds silly, but I do. Um, Unless you know him. And I have my favorite eye doctor. And I have, yeah. So, um, it's, it's hard. And then I guess for me, like now I want to have a couple home bases. That's the goal. I'm like totally tired of this lifestyle. Um, but like, cause I lived in Berlin for so long. I like, I'm going to make some doctor's appointments. Like, you know what I mean? Like do my oh, checkup. Yeah. So you know how you got like in Tokyo, it made you like, Oh shit. I forgot about what this feeling is. Like, did you yeah. get like the, Oh, I've been in Berlin for a long period of time. I forgot what this feeling is. Yeah. Maybe I missed some of that too. Yeah, yeah. You mean like familiarity, like yeah, or like yeah. having a home base for a little longer. Actually, oh, this actually is nice. I oh, I loved it. I actually loved it. I know, like, I mean, the pandemic obviously is like horrible. A lot of people died. Yeah. Um, Losers. but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. You didn't. Ugh. Not losers. Knock on wood. All right. Um, <laughs> You're like, all right, please don't, please don't make me a sound bite. Yeah. But um. <laughs> For me, like having 11 months, is someone in the apartment? <laughs> I think someone's in the apartment. Um, We're closed again. It's at least scaling the walls. Yeah. 
ha- uh, having 11 months uh, in one place, I actually didn't know in advance how long I was going to be there. So it was, it was still like uncertainty because it was kind of a month to month thing. So there was a level of uncertainty. But um, being in this one apartment, and it was quite large actually, which I'm not used to either, um, having a place, I love cooking. You know, and I could, I could really like buy all the spices I love. I could buy like toasted sesame oil. Yeah, you know, I could buy like specialty products you're not going to buy when you're in Paris for a week. Right. You know? Oh, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a bottle worth. And you're like, no. Yeah. I'm here for a week. This is a year's worth of shit. Yeah, or right. Or six months. Right. You can't even buy a ketchup. Yeah. That's cheap enough. Yeah, yeah, like, right. You know? Exactly. Um, That's so funny. A commitment to a bottle of, yeah. of spice is like, yeah. is like, it's saying I'm going to be here for a bit. It's a big commitment to buy that, that spice yeah. bottle. Yeah. Like those, you know, those little Tabasco bottles? I do. Get, yeah, it's like that's too small you, for me because yeah. I use like <laughs> oh, really? two of those in one meal probably. Yeah, but like you got to, you can never get a big bottle. Yeah, right. Think about that. Yeah. Or of shampoo. shampoo. I don't get big bottles of shampoo either. Because you're just tra- Oh, because you can't take them on planes. I so do check a bag them. because I have so many liquids. To be honest with you. Check stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Um, preach, sister. Um, so you know what I found. Fun for traveling is problem solving is a fun task. Ooh, tell me more. Um, like today you did really well. <laughs> I did not kidding. do really well. I really failed today. But it goes down to like, it's just money, calm down. Um, oh, fucking dork. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> God, it's so dumb. I should have just kept it. If I'm going to get $80 back, I should have just kept it and be like, oh, I'll get a hotel tonight. Exactly. And figure it out tomorrow. Erin has a hotel room tonight she's not using. Oh, God damn. Oh, you could have I'm stayed like, there. I'm going to meet you dumb tomorrow. I, I just remembered. <laughs> I just wasted the whole thing. She's not going to be like, hey, can I un- uncancel it? She's not going to be like, she, yeah, sure. She's going to be like, you're already a problem. I don't want you my place regardless. <laughs> and no, I'm not just going to give you your money back. I have it now. I have I'd rather I have you not money. stay. <laughs> Fucking shit. Anyway. I was, uh, you know, backpacking around, and my flip flops started to smell. Um, you're walking on the same mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. There are these, like, you know, the ones that go over the top, instead of like the toe ones. Yeah, like, a, like the Adidas, the Adidas shower ones. shoes yeah, or they whatever. Were Michael yeah. Jordan. Okay. You um, you wear those outside? <laughs> I never would, but I was like, I don't know. I need some flip flops, and that's all you wear. <laughs> okay. And then I had like shoes too for walking. They're like around. slides, I guess. Yeah, but everyone in Asia is like yeah. Southeast Asia yeah. wearing those. Yeah, so it's yeah. Like you're not. Yeah, they're slides. Yeah. Um. Anyway, they start to smell, and I'm like, ah, eh, fuck. Like, I, you know, I'm, mm. this is gonna be a problem socially for me. Um, and then I got like a bucket. I had a hotel room that night in Cambodia, and there was I had got a bucket and filled it up with soapy water and just soaked the things and. Sh- I just couldn't get the smell out. I soaked mm. them all night. I'm like, mm. okay, that'll do it. And then took them out, dried them, and it's nah. There, <laughs> that smells in. There. <laughs> so, yeah, I need new shoes, right. which isn't a big deal. Except right. I'm an eleven and a half, which also isn't Is that big. A, it no. Oh, it's just bigger than Asia. Your feet? You yeah. small feet? You're I a very no- tall guy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That it's normal size shoe. Oh, thirteen is already getting big. <clears throat> How tall I, are you? Six three. I've never had a problem finding my shoe size in America, but in Cambodia, oh, right. it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. we don't right. have people that shoes that, of course. so they go up to like 10, Yeah, and that's hard, and so you're like, do you have anything <laughs> like, you learn that it's a 44, 45, oh, 46, no. whatever it is in like European size, yeah, it's like, right. and they're like, we have a 41, and I'm like, oh, this won't fit, and they're like, it'll stretch out, I'm like, the, <laughs> the base won't stretch out, the top sometimes, stre- like, that's not the solution, so is there funny. anyone else, and so I'm like, couldn't find, yeah, Shoes couldn't find flip flops anywhere, and then yep. I finally found some in like a store store mm. instead of a market. Mm. Um, splurged on some some like surf brand shoes, mm. um, and then I'm like, cool, solved. And then like two weeks later, they started to break. Um, um, I think they were Billabong or something, and the whole bottom started to come <laughs> off. And I'm like, oh fuck! And I'm in like, I think I was in like Indonesia going to like. Um, what those dragons are? Oh, Komodo. Komodo dragons. They started to flip out, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll chuck these and get new ones. And I'm like, oh wait, no, you can't chuck. You're not going to be able to find new ones. That's that's not a realistic goal. Is finding new ones. It took you two days oh to find my these. God. So I'm like, okay, on Komodo, I have to find some super glue mm. and some staples and just like figure it out. Mm. And it's like a fun task. Mm. Your bus left. You don't speak the language, and you're like, I have to figure out how to get the next bus. Yeah. That's why I'm like problem solving yeah. is like a fun thing. 
Yeah. Or it can really bother you, but you know, I guess you uh, let it go yeah. one or the other. You have to be good at it or you have to get good at it. Yeah. If you're going to do this lifestyle. And like shitty things are going to happen all the time. Yeah. Like both of us were dealing with stuff today just regarding like where we're we going to sleep tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And you're like, oh shit, I actually have to do this pretty soon. Right. Right. I'll just be homeless for the night. Yeah. Right. Um, so things are definitely going to happen. So, I mean, you have to have some level of resiliency and problem solving and like um, the ability to like dive in and like fix, yeah, fix the problem. Yeah. Right. But it does take a certain personality or you, you get good at it. Like I said, yeah, you'll have to like learn. I've gotten better at it. I mean, I think I was always like pretty good problem solver and like, I'm pretty good at pivoting. Like if something goes wrong, I'm like pretty good at like figuring out like oh, okay. the next thing, you know? Um, I mean, you did with the class. But now I'm like be- so much better. Yeah. You did it with the class. Something went right. Where like a spot opened up. Oh yeah. You were leaving tomorrow. Yeah. And now you're like, oh, no, yeah. I'm not leaving. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. So but it's the same pivot for whatever reason, you know? Yeah. It's the same as if your thing you were headed to in Berlin got canceled. You're like, fuck. Oh, maybe I'll yeah. stay for another week. It'd be, you know, yeah. same pivot regardless of the reason. You, yeah, you just have to be like... Um, so with that problem... On yeah. your feet? Spry? So with that know. problem solving, how do you find doctors and like and like regular shit and like a new backpack? Berlin, you can find them, but like... Sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what I was trying to say about like having a couple home bases would be ideal because then you can have like your favorite doctor in Berlin right. and your favorite hairstylist in Lisbon. Yeah. And yeah. How long does it take you in a new city to get like, oh, here's my coffee shop I go to. Here's a couple of cool restaurants around and there's a bar I like. For me, not that long. I mean, maybe a week, a week, a few days. I don't know. Okay. I mean, we're in Paris. We're like in Paris. I, awesome. I forgot how big this city is. It's and so big. Dense and like every area is cool. Yeah. I mean, yesterday walking to our going away party, I, I was like there. overwhelmed by how cute everything was. I'm like, in my lifetime, I can never see and go to all these cafes. Yeah. But I wanted to. I'm like, uh, oh uh-huh. my gosh, you know. I have green flags on all the places I want to go to. I saw like, red on Google Maps. I, oh, really? Yeah. And it, it's ridiculous. I'll show you my map. It's like, <laughs> like <laughs> I have. I think I have 1,200 like things saved. In the world? For, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That Paris is nice is though when you open it up and you're like, oh, okay, I'm right here. Let me open it. I'm like, oh, two blocks away is. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, it's wild. You know, whatever it is. So yeah, it takes me like in Paris, like I want to try a new place every single yeah. day because we can and we should. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, in Berlin, yeah, it takes a few days or a week to be like, I want to go here again and again, right, right. you know, I like this neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, I've been, okay, cool. The coffee is a big one. Like Co- where can I yeah. get coffee? And you'll find that I find pretty, it's in a few blocks. Like, yeah. Like, oh, this one was no good. And like, oh, this coffee's good. Let's mm. I'll go every morning until mm. I can find another one. Mm. Um, where I was staying right across the street was this nice cafe that was open until two. And I would sit there and write and drink some wine. That's not nice. Yeah, and I always like try to go further than my radius, but I'm like, this is actually perfect. No, that's nice. Yeah. In um, uh, where you live in New York? No. Um, oh, here. here. Oh, time. nice. Okay. I need some more. Um, um, <coughs> what was I gonna say? Bad host. Bad host. Bad host. You might be a little yeah. tired from all the partying this week. God damn. <laughs> did a lot of it. Ah, fuck. Well, whatever it was. I'm sure it was not important. Um, let's do this one first. You're talking about favorite cafes and like favorite restaurants. Oh, how long to like, get set you... in a place? <laughs> huh. Oh, I know. I was on a Reddit thread or something like lo- researching Paris. Like, how do you find this or that? And one question somebody asked Reddit or like that. What's that site that asks questions and people answer? Quora? Yeah. Yeah. And somebody was like, how do I find cafes? And some guy was like, dude, literally walk outside. <laughs> and like, I know, but which way? I was like, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating here. Walk outside and every direction you can see a cafe. Yeah. Leave the house, yeah. people. And they're all the same. Leave the house. They're all just as good. It's fine. Yeah. Where we went, I wouldn't go again, but it was fine. We're, oh, just now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't go again. Coffee was good. It was, and it was cute. The same fucking wicker, cute. wicker back chairs. Yeah. Smoke a cigarette. People watching. Baby. You know, <laughs> Smoke a you actually ate baby. some snails, some which is snails. funny for like the first meal of the day, which I'm assuming that was for you. <laughs> I need protein. We got the vegan salad. 
I know, that's true. <laughs> they were not as good as the first time I had I can't them. believe you didn't save me one. <laughs> I thought I did, but that would, it was like one of the, what's that thing, the nut you have to crack open? Yeah, Cashews? it's just stuck in there. Oh, yeah, walnuts. W- no, the one that you buy in a bag at the supermarket. Pistachios. Pistachios. And sometimes they're fully closed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was fully closed. <laughs> that snail is way up there. Yeah. So I'm sorry. It's okay. No, we. I'll find another reason another time and get you a <laughs> snail. Let's do this good one before we do a bad one. Or not a bad one. I don't know why I keep doing this. I'll end that one. Uh, what are relationships like? How do you form long-term romantic relationships in, when you're... Traveling, I don't know if someone oh. knows, it'd be great if they could like put in the comments. <laughs> Fair, <laughs> Fair. <laughs> is that one of the hardships? It's I not guess? my area of expertise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm. People have, I mean, I actually know a lot of people who have met at this nomad conference I like going to. Uh-huh. It used to be called the Nomad Cruise, um, it was on a huge cruise ship that crossed the Atlantic Ocean. Um, Whoa. so the first one I did was 2017 from Cartagena, Colombia to Lisbon Yeah, and it takes two weeks. Whoa. So it was like two weeks of, um, lectures, workshops, acro yoga on the roof, you know, the talent show, lots of drinking and, you know, crazy stuff. Um, I did that cruise three times. Super fun. Um, and travelers love acro yoga and fire dancing in crypto and crypto, crypto ecstatic dance. There's always like a deep connection event where you have to like do the eye gazing. Have you done the eye gazing thing? No, in like acting class a long time ago. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, it's uncomfortable. uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, we're doing, let's just stop. Like we need you to get comfortable. I'm like, I don't want to get comfortable with this. <laughs> it's just not I guess it'd me. be a good skill to have to make someone else uncomfortable. Like you're all, like everyone's <laughs> sitting around a bar and you're just like, like, if I go to Aaron, you know, we're all talking and I'll just like <laughs> look at it and she'll be like, it's like there's a difference between looking here and looking there. Mm. Yeah, and so anyway, then you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> so from that Nomad cruise, well, I, mean, I, I think after the ecstatic dance, I think there were some babies made, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure ecstatic dance was the, the, the one that did it. Um, but there are definitely people who are married and like have kids from this Nomad conference I go to. So it but, happens. So then what do you do? So like if you meet somebody... Another traveler is probably who, well, no, it's either a traveler or someone who lives in that town. Yes. So then it's a, yes. you can either come with me or, <laughs> yes. or you, or I'll yes. move here. Yes. There's Le- a choice leave your made. job as a heart surgeon in Lisbon and, and come with me. That's Unlikely. Not, that's not, not going to happen. Right. So then it's like, <clears throat> then you have to re-examine like, yeah. is living in Lisbon still, does it feel like traveling still? Or do you, are you ready to settle down in that moment? Yeah. I mean, if, if I personally, if I met someone in a place where I would, I could see myself living and yeah. fell in love, like I would do it. I mean, just because I'm also ready to stop <laughs> doing this lifestyle. You've had it for a while. I've done it a while. Six years is a lot. It's Again, a I thought time. it was going to be six months. Six years is a lot. Is there, is there, is there any, when you're like ready, say you're ready to leave. Okay. So I'm saying, I'm assuming there's all these societal pressures to do one way or the other people are like oh that must be an empty life i'm sure do you get yes Ooh, i have a story i was in new york with my best friend one of my best friends and her husband we were out at a bar and then she had another friend with us yeah. i don't remember what she does my friends in finance so like most of her Called friends her michelle and barack obama <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you're friends with michelle and her husband barack they live in new york I now uh, i don't know i thought they lived in chicago yeah maybe <laughs> Um, so one of her friends, I'm assuming she works in finance. I forgot what she does. And we were just sitting at the bar and, you know, she was asking me about my lifestyle. I would only been doing this for a couple of years at that point. Mm-hmm. And a couple she, of years. I've yeah, only been only doing this for years. a couple of years. I, I, it sounds ridiculous to me as well. God I know. damn, okay. And she looks at me. She looks at me in the eye. She goes, what are you doing? What are you doing? This new person you met? Yeah, my friend's one of her really good friends what who works doing? in finance and has like like a great condo in oh, finance people can P- never Prospect that. Park or whatever. They can never understand She's it. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I felt attacked. I was attacked. I felt attacked. Wow. Yeah. No. What are you doing? Not like how is that? Like what are you doing? And I was like, okay, let me get this straight. You wake up at five a.m. every day. You put on high heels. You walk, you know, a few blocks to the <laughs> New York subway. No, rats. thank you. Um, I'm setting up for a joke with bringing up the subway. Oh yeah. Um, you know, you get on the subway, you take it to like Goldman or wherever and work 12 hours a day 
and you eat all your meals inside the building and you go home when it's dark and you you have like an hour before you should probably go to bed your feet aching you, 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 but you, you know you, you know this you're talking to an ant and saying why are you working for this hive they're never going to reward you with anything yeah so but I mean she I feel has a little no idea that there's another way yeah and like I'm sure her 401k doing? is about a thousand times bigger than mine yeah exactly and like I'm it, sure yeah. there are lots of bad I'm not and I'm I feel bad like I know a lot of people who have yeah there's nothing there's wrong with saying, having a job and having a great right. apartment and prospect like I, I envy that too but you there's know? a difference between saying I don't think I could do that to you shouldn't do it it's, that's the thing like she's just ladder. judging me yeah. and it's like what are you doing lady what are you doing yeah you're do judging you, do me do you know you know I get that with my old religious friends when they're like, "What are you doing with this empty?" Like, you know, just like having sex and like you do. I'm like, dude. After a while, I'm like, enough is enough. You have fucking seven kids. You're living your life with this fucking deity that doesn't exist, mm. who's just gonna abandon you when you die. And for what? So that your kids can breed and they can breed. Do something. It's like you hold your tongue for a while, but at some point they look down on you so hard that you're like, you want to be like, let's do this then. Yeah. Ugh. Amen. Amen, Rabbi Ari. Do you also get, so, that's interesting. Do you also get leading judgment the other way, where you're like, I'm ready to stop, and you're like, well, you couldn't hack it? Oh, I think after six years, I, like, paid my dues. Right. I mean, is, I think I'm like, you know, I don't there, think a nomad would be like, oh, you only did six years. I mean, I, I'm, like, up there, I think, regarding length of time. Yeah. Like, Is there an expectation of the, in the nomad community to the, this is forever, this is your new thing? No. There's not. I, don't, I mean, no, I haven't experienced it. Okay. I mean, there's like a ton of diversity in the nomad community. I yeah. mean, like the events I go to are, um, it, they're run by a German guy. And so most of the people are German and Dutch and European mm -hmm. from different countries. And um, like a lot of them have, they had like a normal life and they, they own a condo in Amsterdam or wherever, wherever they're from. You know, they... They have a condo and they rent it out for three months when and they go to like Thailand in the winter. Right. That's but they fun, want to be in Berlin in the summer and the condo that they own. You know, like there are like lots of different ways to do this lifestyle. Slowing down. Some but people not are stopping. Like David and I, like full nomads, no home, no real estate, no like base anywhere. Like we're probably more rare. There are a lot of like part time nomads, um, yeah. short time nomads. I mean, you know, there are like, like lots of different ways to like construct this life. Yeah, there are a lot of ways to construct it. The having a, a, a love seems like it'd be the hardest. I have this guy, Tom Rhodes, he's a comedian. He's mm. the traveler comedian. Um, yeah. He just finally settled down again. But I mean, it was like 20 years. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like as a no, like a no home base? Yeah. Now he gets jobs mm. that take him places. Mm. And so a lot of times he'll, he'll, he would figure out problem solving. How do you make it work financially? Mm. So like a lot of comedy clubs, let's say they'll, they'll have a condo. So let's say there's a comedy club near here. They'll buy this flat and they just put every week the comic comes into town. They to stay here, you know, but they're doing shows Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's open. So he'd be like, hey, would you mind if I come on Monday and stay till the next Wednesday? Because mm -hmm. I don't have my next gig until, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in Nice until whatever. Mm -hmm. um, he'd make that work and whatever. And actually, I saw him once at a, a comedy festival mm -hmm. in America, but he still just travels around there, too. Um, and some older comic asked him, like, Tom Rhodes, how you been, man? He's like, been great. He's like, where are you living now? And he goes, in these shoes, man. <gasps> I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I, I love like, it he's so my much. Hero. I love it so much. Um, but he got a, he, he fell in love with a okay. girl and they're like, you know, I want to be together with you. And he goes, <laughs> okay, then you got to get everything down to two suitcases. Like, it's like double commitment. Mm hmm. <laughs> so it's like I'm not moving here you like this lifestyle yeah. if you can get into my lifestyle then yes let's do this together yeah if you want to get with that, me you yeah. gotta get with <laughs> if you want to be my lover <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, that's I mean that'd be the only way to do it right to have like a long term or, or long distance are we talking about relationships again yeah. oh. <laughs> ugh um, there are lots of ways to do it. I'm, I'm being silly, but, um, long distance. Yeah. And also I, I've met couples too. Like one person is a nomad and one person likes to be at home and that's, that's okay. Like so, if they figured months. it out. Yeah. Wow. 
I mean, people, yeah, I mean, you can do what you want, people. Like, if you want to be a nomad and your girlfriend wants to, like, never, ever leave New York, like, you can, like, negotiate something. They could say no, you know, yeah. you can't, which will make you want to do it more. Yeah. Or they could say, yeah, cool. Like, here are the, this is the agreement, you know? I, I know a couple, an older couple um, uh, from the West Coast, and, like, the husband retired before the mom. The, right. Before the, de- the, yeah. the wife. And so he's like. That's rude. That's just rude. For the mom. Yeah. That's <laughs> rude. Um, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to Mexico for two months. And right, she's like, but I want to come to. She's like, retire then, and right. you can come. Right. But like, I'm free, so I'm right. gonna. And they're just like, yeah, cool, go. Right. It's like a cool understanding where he lives his fun life, and she's like, I enjoy being this, it's doing this job. So that's, she's that's like, great. yeah, don't stop. Let people be who they are. Yeah. It's just like I'll miss you. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'll miss you. Yeah. But go. Yeah. It's just hard to start a relationship that way. They're already together for uh, like thirty years. You know? Yeah. I mean, like I said, like you know, I met someone um, who lived in. A city where I was yeah. <laughs> and we dated for a year you know like I had a long I, for me that's long term <laughs> dated for a year where in Berlin yeah right but you were that's interesting because then you finally were trying to be anonymous about it you, but yeah oh. yeah yeah it just ended no oh. um actually almost two years ago wow time flies yeah that's why you went to Berlin not really I mean, I was in Berlin when we met, and then I had a bunch of other travel plans, and then I did go back to visit him, and then I really liked Berlin, and then I ended up getting a two-month sublet that I had to prepay for. Guess Great. when that was? February of 2020. Yeah, right, yeah. Wow. So I prepaid for March and April 2020. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, I mean, and he's not a nomad. No, no, he's like anti-nomad. So if you start, he's anti-nomad. Again, oh, really? Yeah. So if you start moving again, then it's like, this is gonna, yeah, we we're gonna have to deal with it. Yeah, we would have had to negotiate something like, hey, I'm going to Portugal for a month, like see you in a month, or yeah, like maybe come with me for a part of the time and stay here, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but also. Like I said, you know, if I really met the right person, I would, and I liked the city they were that I met them in, that they lived in, uh-huh. I would consider, you know, staying there, if it was really the, mm-hmm. the you know, the one, you know, like. Mm-hmm. I met when I was vagabonding. I met that I met an Italian nomad uh, woman who was gone for five years mm-hmm. at the time, yeah. which I was like, what? Like, you know, I, I think I was gone for two months at mm-hmm. that point, and and I will mm-hmm. be going home mentality and five years and I was like how do you not run out of money mm. um, and she said she travels for six months mm. and then finds a foreign location to work in for six months so she's like I picked oranges in Sydney for six months oh yeah she goes, I'm not from Sydney I was still traveling while I was picking oranges mm-hmm. there yeah that was still travel I picked I trimmed weed in California she's like I've never been to California so right. that was still travel right um, while I was doing that for some cash build up some cash and then go right Please tell me this is recording. Yes. <laughs> DIY. DIY, I looked at it. Um, yeah, so like if you do like hole up, it's like it's, if as long as you're not going back to Portland, <laughs> it is still like exciting, right? Oh, Portland's exciting too. Yeah. I, I was just there for a month, I think. Like it was, yeah. it was great. I love seeing my old friends. I love my mom lives there. I love seeing my mom and my friends. I'll be there in November. My friend, I kind of lost touch. Like she was one of my favorite people when I lived in Portland, and I kind of lost touch. Um, not intentionally. It was just like one of those things. And we reconnected because I was like, I really loved her. I <laughs> like, why don't I talk to her? So I reached out to her, and it turns out she and her husband um, bought some property in White Salmon, Washington, and he's yeah. an architect. And he designed this like tiny home and they just have this like five acres in Washington on the oh. Columbia Gorge, which is my favorite oh, part and place in the world. Love the gorge. Me too. Yeah. It's really my favorite place. What's that thing and you get to walk straight up and the guy carves stairs into Beacon the- Rock. Oh. So cool, right? Yeah. Um it's I, near I the gorge, right? love it's in the gorge. Oh, okay. It's in the gorge, yeah. I love hiking <laughs> in, in the gorge specifically. And there are tons of waterfalls. It's just gorgeous. We saw Bald yeah. Eagle. I mean, Bald Oof. Eagle's there like 
the subway rats you know yeah. like they're everywhere it's like pedophiles in new york <laughs> <laughs> god. you cannot see one. Oh god <laughs> they um, should put pedophiles in the new york state flag just some guy like me with a little <laughs> balder and just like <laughs> looking down um how did you go there from bald eagle but that, how did i go there you know from it's just your brain bird. your brain at work um but like we she invited me out there so we went out to her cabin and like uh. hung out in her tiny home with her friend and their dogs and it was amazing it was amazing so like i love going home i you know yeah but home quote staying unquote. home is different yeah well i stay with my mom when i go and that's fun but like i'm not gonna like live with my mom i can do that for a few days permanently it's like hey yeah, i probably gotta get a hotel i should not be here in my 40s at your place um um are you the adventurous one of your friends especially now i got a friend who was like i was supposed to visit him in nashville and then he picked up a corporate gig in vegas and he couldn't he was like oh fuck dude i know we're supposed to play golf for a few days but mm. like I, I i sorry i picked up some work i'm gone he goes, however, if you want, they're paying me hella. And they're like, I'm taking a private jet back to Greenville, South Carolina. All right. That's on my list. That's on my to-do list. I've never been I've never one. done that. Yeah. You haven't? Yeah. And he goes, we'll get you a suite at this place for mm. free. We have a private table from this billionaire I know. Mm. He's going to like it as a private table to play on. We'll eat steaks and whatever. Mm. If you can come right now. And I was like, and I just looked for Southwest and it was like $150. And mm. I was like, yeah, I'll be. And he goes, hey, dude, just so you know, you're the only one of my friends that would have done Aww. that. Oh. Like spontaneous. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else like, no, I'm already in Nashville. I'm not going to go, go yeah. Greenville and drive. And I, then I drove it from Greenville through like the Blue Mountains and got to my show in like five minutes before starting. And that's a beautiful area, <laughs> yeah, right? it's gorgeous. Yeah. But like, you must be that for your friends. I mean, it's actually a funny question because now I'm friends with a lot more adventurous people. Oh, so yeah, when you ask me that, I'm like, negated. no, I don't yeah, think right. I am the adventurous one. Yeah, of my right. Friend. I'm really not. I'm like, no, I don't. I mean, I have like tons of friends that are still in the U.S. or, you know, they don't want to be nomads. And I, I love that about them, you know, mm-hmm. um, but they're still adventurous in their own ways. You know, they go whitewater rafting and they go, you know, I mean, you could be adventurous in your hometown. <laughs> right. Person willing to do something. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to like literally swim with sharks like me, my impetus, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, right. You, you can, can just be like, OK, the people are just like, OK. Yeah. You can have fun and do stuff in your in your hometown, no matter where you live. Um, my friend, that same friend, back when he was like drinking, bad. Uh, my other friend was having a. He's like a family guy now, but my other friend was like woke up in a bad, depressed state, and he called him and he was like, "Hey, uh, buddy, like I, it's eleven thirty in the morning, and I don't know what I sh- I'm just in a terrible state mentally, and I just need a drink. Mm. And like, would you be into?" drinking right now heavily drinking i know it's 11 and he goes oh you called the right guy (laughs) (laughs) he's like let's go (laughs) it's good to have friends you know it's good to have have supportive friends "Uh not like i got a lot what do you i can't it's crazy i can't (laughs) people are like hey i'm going right right around i'm gonna have a drop out like okay like it's nice to have those friends i am that person if they're like it's a like like back when i had the nine to five life you know in portland like it was a friday um and someone was like hey there's a spot that opened my whitewater rafting trip tomorrow you yeah. have to get up at six and it's all day you're gonna be with people for like 14 hours that you don't know i'd be like yes like awesome yeah wow people you don't know I'd be like no way no way you did that this week you branched out there you knew rolf though i knew rolf i knew one person and he was a teacher so now there's a barrier <laughs> now there's like we, we were friends but now it's like a power dynamic show <laughs> oh, how did that make you feel I mean, it's like we're not friends right now. You're the boss. Oh, I see. You know? Yeah. Um, we're still friends, but just like I defer to you. So it's like we're going to hang out with the class. He's not really a hierarchical person. No, I know. He's but not it like is an that. authoritarian writing teacher. Yeah. <laughs> um, what a great class, though. It was awesome. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I was worried. I was worried about making friends. Were you? Yeah, but it was instantly. It was on Sunday night meetup. I was already lonely for three days. That helped. And then it was like, oh, you guys are just bomb. Everyone's interesting. We have a fucking a classmate who lives in Beirut. Mm. A white lady, not someone from Beirut. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. I liked you right away because you brought a really good rosé. <laughs> oh, that's right. To the meetup. That's the only reason. <laughs> yeah. I had a choice. I, and I would say maybe this is a life lesson. Stopped in. I was already a little late. And I was like, oh, fucking wine shop. Cool. 
I stopped him. I was like, I need a rosé. He's like, where are you from? Let's talk a little. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to be a rude American. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm like, New York. He goes, oh, New York is like nice, but not better than Paris. I'm like, it's similar. I'm like, it's similar. I'm like, we have better rats. And he goes, we have rats? I'm like, not like New York rats. And he was like, okay, fair. But he's like, what do you need? And uh, like rosé. And he's like, what What are we looking at? Like, I have my friends I'm meeting in, in the park. What flavor profile do you like? Yeah. I'm no. like, I don't, you're asking the wrong guy for that. He meant like how much? And was like, we have this for 11 or this for 19. And mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to be the guy bringing cheap wine. So I'm like, yeah, give me the 19. You noticed it? It's worth it. A few extra bucks in moments. I mean, I have to say too, it was wrapped entirely in like aluminum foil. He was like, you going to the park? Hold on. And I, I still you. noticed that it was a good rosé. Yeah, that's right. You couldn't even see the label. No, I'm just bragging. Yeah. Yeah, you were like, you're like, hey, um, this is good. I'm a wino. And um, <laughs> this is good wine, just so you know. Good job. <laughs> I, I like, worked in a winery. Okay. I had to learn about wine. Yeah. Did you work at one in New Can York? Can I get some water? Is that allowed? Yeah, sure. Go for it. <laughs> and then I want to ask this question. By the way, yeah, go get water. I'll promote a day. Right. I'm going to be in Portland. Where is it now again? Oregon? Uh, in November. I think the first weekend of November. Possibly. First weekend. At Helium. Get tickets now at rx.com. Wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah. You're coming to Portland? Yeah. When? Going to Portland. Not coming. You won't be there. I say coming because it's like my yeah. home base ish. Yeah, well. I mean, not my home base, but you know. Used to be. When are you playing? November. Oh, cool. At some point in November, my phone is. I'm gonna be in this. South Africa. Damn. Otherwise, the I would love to. Shit. I would That's love to. So much cooler. I've never seen your stand up. I would love to see it someday. Oh uh, yeah. Well, if we're ever cross paths in Europe, I will. I think I'm we're gonna be crossing doing paths a in Europe. Europe. <laughs> yeah, a European tour in April. I've decided while I was Next here. Next April. So, I'll tell you where I'm going to be. That's still free on my calendar. So. <laughs> okay. Um, Can you go to a cool city, though? Not Berlin? <laughs> uh, Berlin is cool. Yeah. I, I, I didn't hear you say Berlin. Berlin. Oh, yeah. It'll be all over. Okay, but I'll definitely cool. hit Berlin. All right. No way I won't. You're going to hit a bunch of different cities in Europe. Mm-hmm. Cool. Underrated city in Europe that I might not know about. Split Croatia. Mm. It's underrated for Americans, but it is very popular. But I, but most yeah. of the tourists I saw there were European, probably. When I was in China, I was like, there's no fat Chinese people. <clears throat> um, and then we were like noticing, like, yeah, no fat Ch-. I was like, oh, there's one, finally. And my friend was like, that guy's Korean. And <gasps> oh I'm like, God. oh, I don't know. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, he's just visiting. Um, what, what do people not know? We'll wrap it up soon. What do people not know? Where people can find you, by the way, if they want to find you and tell you or ask you questions, which I think they probably would. Not that you have to answer all their questions, but. Sure. Um, I have an Instagram, which is so funny because I have like 100,000 photos of my travels. And wow, also really? I'm a writer. And um, I don't think I've posted since 2019, which is yeah. like so insane. Oh, you have, you ha- but not on your Instagram. You have 100,000 just on your phones and computers. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I have 100,000 photos that I've taken. from. Why not? Yeah. Why don't you post? I think it's something like someone said this week, kind of like. It's just like kind of showing off your life. I mean, I know that's the whole point it's of Instagram, braggy. but like, I just can't do it. It like, is braggy. Look I at do. this bomb thing I did. Look at this. Aw- I'm awesome. Look at it. If you make a picture like that of those of those waves, yeah, and you have it in your home, it's like cool. I like looking at it. If yeah. you put it on Instagram, it's for other people. Yeah, it's it's you saying you'll want to see this. <clears throat> it's yeah, I get it. I get it. I'm, I mean, I'm formulating a way to start posting on Instagram again in a way that I find interesting and that would help people like like tips you know like like things that would help people like i don't want to post like look at my amazing life yeah you know i would post things like oh did you know there's a new blah 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 and and split that you you know i don't know Can can i brainstorm something yeah spitball something whatever yeah um start a company so it's not yeah. you doing yeah. it, it's a brand doing yes. it. Yes, yes. So many people mix those things up. Yes, love it. Um, and then it's like, here's this for me and my friends, and then this yeah. is the travel advice. You go to, I mean, you go to The Gap for a shirt. You don't go to Bob's who makes shirts, you know, your friend Bob. Like, The Gap. I don't know <laughs> who owns that, you know? I'm not supposed to. Bad example. Is The Gap still around? No. <laughs> I think it might not I be. I think so. Fucking shit. Um... Yeah, so uh, Zylista is my Instagram Zylista. handle. X, let me see. Hold on if I get it right. X Y L L I S T A. Yeah, great. Good job. X Y L I S T A. Okay. That's my current one. I might create a brand. Yeah, it's very brand. And on the brand, you go like, 
brainchild of yeah yeah Zylista. yeah yeah that's so good so they can be like oh that's good look at you but you stay private then you go private so people can't can't really get to mine's you. not private so yeah. yeah well you're not a brand yet you're not associated with it that would be a cool one tips look at these cool places you don't have to put yourself yeah. in it it's like travel porn yeah travel porn's an underrated industry <laughs> is it uh, yeah i'm just like look at these faraway places i can live through these pictures i think it's an oversaturated market actually. yeah it might be but that's another reason too like i hate being like one voice out of like millions it i follow seems- a few i don't know how i got on them but instagram accounts that it's like beautiful norway and it's just like pictures of fucking some waterfall somewhere i just love them i'm just like wow <laughs> every time they come up I'm like this is so cool <laughs> yeah it's funny yeah i also have a website um which is my name so zylea burrows my full name so zylea burrows x y l i a let me try this one i have two options in my head i'm gonna go with the cheers version of it b u r r no no okay b u r r no oh b u r it's b u r o g h no o w s you're gonna confuse all your damn it b u r o w s b u r o s it's okay so it's like Leah Burroughs. like Oral Burroughs. Do you know what Oral Burroughs is? No. I think it oh, is. Oh, Oral Burroughs? Yeah. That's B-O-R-O-S. Oh, okay. What is that? It's the snake that's eating its tail, snake that's which eating its tail. like signifies infinity or something. Mm-hmm. Right? It's Leah Burroughs. It's like Leah Burroughs, uh, B-U-R-O-S. And what do you do? Brand strategy, marketing? I for- do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Ironically, I do. <laughs> I do brand strategy, yeah. Oh, yeah. marketing, and PR for other people. Hire yourself, right? Everything <laughs> Not off, for me. Double write it off. I do it for other people. Yeah. I help. Um, I've been working with architects and uh, people like that, designers, for a long time. But um, I'm branching out. I worked for a think tank in Berlin. I helped promote a really cool conference they put on. Um, and I also, yeah, worked for like an innovation company, industrial design company in Germany, in Hamburg. And I wrote their whole staff's bios. Like I interviewed every single person at the company and wrote their first kind of professional bio statement. And then I did like speaking training with them so they could introduce themselves in a more confident way during client meetings. So what's your name? No, that's exactly what they're doing. Bill. I'm Torsten. No, this is my, I have an impression. Hi, I'm Torsten. I'm 26. I've been working here for three and a half years. I mean, I'm like, what like you do not want to introduce yourself to a client like that so, so you just go over there you gotta be like hey i'm torsten how are yeah. you this is what i do here i love doing it. i'm they- torsten i am deeply committed to oh, wow. solving you know better that's better for sure yeah <laughs> uh, uh, like uh working with the circular economy and making sure this vacuum cleaner that we designed for you is going to be like completely recyclable when it falls apart in 50 years yeah you know that's cool like just like an impact statement right yeah like how do you introduce yourself you're not like I'm Ari. I'm like forty something, and I, oh, I include my age. Like I'm from. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> why would I include my age? I'm from, no, well, uh, Europeans love it. That's why. Oh really? Oh yeah, they love it. Well, especially Germans, they love it. It's like part of their. Hi, I'm I'm Torsten. I'm twenty six. I don't know. Wow, weird. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Ari. I'm from New York. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't include any. I mean, you know, like you can do I it in an help. interesting way, and you can yeah. introduce yourself in a way that's like really boring, things people fall asleep. So that's yeah. that's what I do. Hi, I'm Ari. I'm Aquarius, but I do <laughs> find myself fond of Tauruses. Taurus the bull, as you I'm know. I'm a Taurus. Well, there it is. I did not know that. Also, I enjoy not only boating but looking at boats on harbors. I do too. Um. <laughs> um. Okay, two more questions. Then we can wrap it up. Maybe actually I'll look to see what's going on with this fucking Airbnb before we wrap it up fully. But is there anything surprising or people should know about Nomad Life that they don't know that I didn't cover? Um, I would say Americans have... For me, I was really surprised how hard it was to extricate myself from all of the things that we're supposed to have, like car insurance and um, like the your gym. Like... You know what I mean? Or just extricate like, like get them. out of these contracts. Like oh. they do not want you to go. No. Like AT and T does not want you to leave them. Blink Fitness was like, hey, I need to cancel. Like they stopped it during COVID. Yeah. And then at some point they just go, hey, we restarted those without telling anybody. And I was like, <laughs> no, I need you to stop that. And they were like, can you come in and do it? I'm like, no, I can't come in. The reason right. I'm not coming in is because of COVID. Right. And they're like, can I just do it here? I have a dog with me, and like, I can't bring a dog in with you. I'm like, oh, dicks. Yeah. Let me cancel. Right. 
No, they don't want you to cancel. Yeah. So I remember when I, was, I canceled my car insurance because I sold my car. Yeah. I've never had one since. Wow. Um, I canceled my car insurance and they're like, you have the lowest rate. You've had our car insurance for 10 years. You have the lowest rate of anyone because you've had no, you have no bad record. And they're like, you're never going to get, like if you cancel, like you're never going to get this rate again. Wow. And like okay. a little bit of me was like, oh my God, like. Sure. I'm going to lose my like $125 a month car insurance like tier or something. Yeah. Like, you know, for a split second. And yeah. then I was like, wait. No, I, I want an even lower rate. I'm going to move to Thailand. Zero. Bye. One zero. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's hard. It takes wow. a lot of time. It, t- it took me months. Oh, these are the little things kind of pulling you back. Oh, my God. Like, oh, man, and, and I loved my little... gym, too. But, like, yeah, you have to, can't, you have to quit the, your gym membership. You have to quit the car insurance, health, figure out health insurance. <laughs> yeah. The phone plan still is, like, difficult. Mm. It's, it's yeah, still difficult. Phone plan from, it's still from difficult. So, right now, I'm paying for an American phone plan. And I just got an eSIM, which is, like, a new cool thing. Where it. uh, it's not a SIM card, a physical SIM card you put in your phone yeah. because like my American one is in there, but you can do an eSIM. So right now I have a French, I have French data that like magically appeared on my phone oh, really? without the need for a SIM card. And I have my American. What is an app? Of I'll show you. You know the bars on your phone? Yeah, I saw that. Like I have Yours two. are squares. You saw it. Yeah. There's like two levels of them because one's the American data and one's the French data. Whoa. It's pretty crazy. And so you put a second SIM card in? You don't. It's an E. It's like a. Oh. Yeah. Like it's cool. electronic SIM. How much is it? It was cheap. It gets you I all mean, over Europe? I, I just got a French one for a week and a half. I feel like I only paid $5. You should have done that. Or maybe they're charging me for data and I don't five, even know it. I don't know. It's 5000 I think it was just $5. <laughs> um, so these are just like little stupid things. I hate dealing with all of this stuff. I hate dealing with doctor's appointments and phone plans and contact lenses. I mean, I'm a minimalist. That's part of like why I like this lifestyle is minimalism, mm-hmm. digital minimalism, which is funny because I have like 9,000 unread emails. Um, but digital minimalism, physical, material minimalism, yet we need we need some things, right? Like you need shoes, I guess. Like, yeah. you know? Oh, right. Not now. I was like, what? <laughs> like dusty, you need sandals when you're yeah. in. T- yeah. I mean, like we just need some some things. So. Some things. And like, yeah, so it's not fun, but um, I mean, obviously it's it's worth it, right? Was that tough getting used to? Especially as I don't know how like typical a woman you are, but like of like not having <laughs> What's a typical wardrobe, woman anyway? Being don't answer. And like, don't <laughs> you know, having things. Sometimes. I like clothes, yeah. Just be shopping. I you like know, clothes. <laughs> yeah, but like you're not going with fucking 20 suitcases. Well, you can see my suitcases right there. I finally yeah. got it back. Yeah, it's great. Sure, stuff was lost at Charles de Gaulle. No, not at Charles de Gaulle. Somewhere in Somewhere. the world. Um, but like that is was that harder or hard to be like hey like minimalism in that level where like I can't have a bunch of outfits I can't have three outfits for every occasion <clears throat> not really I mean yeah I'm like a quality over quantity person mm-hmm. so quality over qu- yeah I don't know like I I mean this week I think you've seen all the clothes I yeah, have me too. I have two shirts this one and the other one and then I bought the other one here at a fucking thrift store isn't your other one blue too Striped, yeah. Striped blue. Thrift store, five dollars. Oh, I'm really? Like, I'll just get one there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I like. I mean, yeah, I love clothes. I would love to have like an endless supply of outfits and shoes. Sure. Yeah. But I can't. It's not practical. And again, it's worth it to make those sacrifices. Right. Like, like I'm not uh, missing like much. What all of us have done this week. You know what I mean? Like God. go on long walks and like dance on the Seine with a picnic. And like, what else did we do? Um, we ate at that old bar remember that had like the tunnel that went from under the bar like to the basement oh yeah like there's so I much cool stuff I around with Rolf Potts exploring fucking <clears throat> Parisian streets like doing what he does like let's turn around here and he's like yeah okay and I'm like whoa this is the book <laughs> this, is, this is like being with you in your book come on uh, uh, like uh, that's uh, worth yeah uh, same tango shit uh, just yeah. like I'm gonna go to a, 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 a jazz bar hopefully tonight or tomorrow because that's like one of the things I wanted to do. Writing at cafes and smoking fucking hand yeah. rolls and like drinking oh, coffee yeah. and writing yeah. in journals. Yeah. It's fun. To grow this dumbass fucking French mustache for the week. This is not my normal look. It's not? No. <laughs> no. That's I just your, took down a that's beard. That's your Paris and I was look? Like, I just did it for July 4th. I was like, it was getting hot. And then I was like, and I was like, actually, 
Yeah, I'm going to Paris. Let me do a fucking... Are you serious? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is not I would never would have guessed that. It's a thick fucking I, stash. I thought that was your, your look. No. But actually, it's funny because photos of you, I didn't know who you were. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But I Googled you, obviously, before agreeing to do this. Yeah. Everybody always says, that. sorry, I didn't know who you were. I'm like, I, yeah, I assume no one knows who I am. But the photos you have on your, your profiles are like, they don't... They don't look like you. They here. don't look like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the mustache. I think you should keep yeah, it. Yeah, I'm surprised. I was cute. doing it as like, let me fuck with everybody. People are like, it's cool. I'm like, what? No, we all think it's cool. Damn it. Paris I'm... looks good on you, Ari. The rolling <laughs> cigarettes. It's so fucking. Kiki was like, uh, do you smoke? I'm like, no. I came with a plan to smoke for this time. <laughs> you also are not a smoker? Um, no. You're like trying out a persona just for Paris. Yeah, it's great. I love it. I love playing pretend. It's one of my favorite things. I Outfits do, for I things. I do too. I do too. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. That's weird. Yeah. What else? I mean, what else? I went to an artist bar that time with that, that t-shirt printer or whatever. It's yeah. Just like right. That. Like what else did you do that was fun here? Went to the cemetery oh. where uh, Edith Piaf was buried. I never, I've never gone, but I got here before you guys too. Well, I guess you and I were here at the same time. I didn't know you. Um, but I did that cooking class. Oh yeah. I told you about class. It's like yeah. a six hour cooking class. Um, it was a market class, which I love cooking and shopping for food. A lot of people like don't like it. I love it. So we met up at nine and we went to like a fromagerie, a bakery to get bread. We went to like the fishmonger and the, the French chef asked like, what's fresh and from France? And the guy was like the squid and he was like, okay, okay I guess we're, we're having squid. Wow. And then, um, uh, like, cool we to went cook. to a veggie stand. Yeah, I think that's it. And then we like went to their, um, kitchen and we made this three course menu based on what the 10 of us thought looked fresh and interesting. Wow. It was and, and so. And how to cook. Oh, yeah. And we, wow. we all had to participate. We all had to like cut and chop and peel and grate and like, you know. I'm not going to do that. I was thinking of doing it, but I'm like, I think I just want Monday to sit at a coffee shop yeah. and like journal and do the stuff that I learned in the class. For instead sure. Of like get back to partying and fun. But you'll be back in Paris. I'll be back. And I'm glad you left out the one thing was hang out in the Louvre with. Um... <laughs> we saw Benifer. Yeah, we saw, we Benifer. saw the Afflecks. I did not. Our friends did. The, can you like the week was so full? I totally forgot that yeah, we like saw the Afflecks on their honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. I cannot believe that. I saw the Tour de France. Yeah, you saw the Tour de France. You forgot that. I had no idea. I was that like, was wait, that's Sunday. Here. I was like, it's gonna be crowded. I'm like, uh, but you were like. I was like, when I met you, it was like, how was it? You're like, so cool. Oh, yeah, I met you right after I yeah. just saw the Tour de France go by. The final laps. The final laps. It was freaking amazing. How fast was it? Wow. <laughs> they should be pros. It was amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, this week has been like just jam packed with cool stuff. And the whole point was that is worth me having seven outfits for the next three months. Who cares? You stop missing them at some point, right? Sure. When I got home from backpacking, I forgot. I had to be reintroduced to the idea that I had these clothes at home. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, yeah, this shirt. But it wasn't yeah. like, I'm wearing it home with that shirt. It was just like, it was like a present day. Yeah. It was like Christmas of 20 years straight. I, I, yeah, I, I love you know? that. But I wasn't waiting for it. I love nothing more than going to one of my home bases and like replenishing my, like changing the clothes. Swapping. Yeah, swapping yeah. them out. Like I have some, I have some stuff in storage in Berlin and I have some stuff in Portland and like yeah I love it I, I love going through my stuff like oh I didn't know I had this like Japanese kitchen knife that I bought during the pandemic you yeah. know like I love that but also like I was saying you know it's it's worth it like the experiences you have traveling yeah. are worth the sacrifices for me yeah for sure not where, for where you're like it's not you know whatever you're, somebody asked me when I when I got my first agent in LA a commercial agent Lawrence and uh he was great he like started making me money and someone's some people, my friends back at home, like not in LA, were like, "Well, you gotta give them ten percent." Is that ever like wear on you? I'm like, no, I wouldn't. I get why you're saying that. I wouldn't make any money without them. That's just an operating cost. Mm. I, don't, I don't think twice about signing a check for ten percent because mm. it's like that's how much he costs. Mm. And then he's made me like have my own apartment. Mm. It's like, no, you're focusing on that. That's like a Chinese place where like. We gotta give out soy sauce to everybody. It's like that. The, focus on the order. Like no one's thinking about that <laughs> shit. You know? Yeah, yeah. Those little things are like. It's almost like to a traveler like you. It's almost like, oh, yeah. I guess I don't have a lot of outfits, but like, say la vie. Yeah. Say la vie, as they say. Yeah. So I guess this brings me to my next and final question. Um, and maybe this whole podcast has been an answer to this, but um, 
I've never been able to express this properly in words, so I'm asking you and every travel to, to help me with it. But like, uh, express what, the, there's a freedom that I can't explain to my friends that gets from long-term travel, and nomading is even way deeper, I assume. This freedom of like, go anywhere, do anything, that I'm like, it's not just like being on vacation. It's just another, it's another level. How, yeah can you help me like if i had to explain you know what i'm talking about right? yeah yeah i mean it's funny because people are like oh are you on a holiday i'm like i'm not you know i, I don't actually go on vacation you know yeah. like um for me it's it's um actually what you said earlier about like trying on different roles like i didn't know you're doing this like time. smoking mustache paris uh -huh. thing i didn't know i thought that was you um like for me i consider like my life as a series of vignettes like even before I became a nomad, like I, you know, I had my Chicago life working in the theater. I had my New York life as a English student. I had like my farming life in Arizona and like yeah. also in Italy. One time I was a farmer, <laughs> you know, too much about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had my record label life and I had my architecture event life, you know, like. And that's how I consider, that's how I consider this lifestyle is like, th now this is my Paris, yeah, my Paris vignette. This is the Paris chapter, right? And like, and I don't know what's next. Like I have a few weeks in September, unplanned, totally unplanned. So and for me, that's, I guess, I don't know if I'm like doing a good job explaining what you're asking, but it's just like not knowing is really fun for me. Like it would give a lot of people anxiety, but um, for me, it's, it's so exciting. It's, it, it's the possibilities, right? The possibilities are endless and you're, you're leaving it open. Okay, you're enabling the possibilities to happen for you by being flexible and living out of a suitcase, right? Like this opportunity to take an advanced class with Rolf Potts, who changed my life when I read his book 20 years ago, 18 years, you know, um, was like, hey, you can stay in Paris and take another workshop with me. I'm like, I can do that because I've created my life in such a way that I don't have to be somewhere really next week. I can work from here. I can find a way to get contact lenses. You know what I mean? Yeah. I found a hotel finally. Like, yeah, you're setting the scene, I guess, right? Yeah. What's you're designing a, your life in a way that like cool things meetings opportunities it's almost like it can opens happen up to exponentially you? bigger where and, it's like you're mm -hmm. living in this great house like this house is great like open the door like oh cool it's outside I'm like go out there and you're yeah. like yeah it's so much bigger than my house was that was already pretty big yeah I, I, yeah it's that, it's that feel i don't know it's like a lack of like responsibility or something where you're like <clears throat> it's it's just this feeling of just like like I thought I knew what freedom was and then I didn't until I was actually legitimately gone mm. with no return ticket. It was just like, Oh, this is freedom. Mm. For me, it's a freedom to say yes. You know, it's the ability to say yes. Right. Yeah. I worked 15 years in office jobs, you know, like most of my life I could not have said yes to this amazing opportunity that just came up yesterday. Yeah. Right, right, right. You're like, nah, fuck. I would have had to say no. And like, think about the cost of that missed opportunity. Like, I'm sure a lot of people here are like, oh, so privileged. Oh, yeah. But yes. But like, yes. Think, you've, but, you've arranged a life for yourself where it's this massive privilege. It's not financial or racial. It's, yes, it's a privilege that you for five years have gone out yeah. to where it's like, yeah, I've had this sweet spot where I can just stay in Paris another week, just like that. Where you were like, you weren't like, oh my God, there's an opportunity. Can I, can I afford that? Can I get it? You were just like, I got in. Yeah. It, it, there's not even a thought of not doing it. Yeah. I would go to Morocco now. I'm not yeah. free like that right now. Yeah. And instead, I'm like, I got a dog to take care of and mm. a fucking, you know, it's like, I, ah, fuck. Yeah. And it's just like, a, a, I can feel now, especially with, next to you guys, a, la a that lack of freedom. And this is pretty free compared to who I'm. My you are pretty at home. free compared to, to most the vast people majority at home. of people. Even. Yeah, even to comedians, like you're going for a writing class for right. two weeks in Paris. Right. Like, right. It's so cool. I'm like, yeah, it is cool. Right. But it's not as cool as it could be if I could go on to Morocco after this. You can. I can, I know, but they're dog walkers and stuff, I hear. <sighs> I 
I'm trying to corrupt Ari Shafir. The special edit. Yeah. I did editing notes for my special. I did, there was a Cafe Havana. I bought a Cuban cigar and sat there. No one was in there. And I sat there yeah. with an open laptop editing my fucking degenerate jokes about, you know, fucking blowjobs and whatever. And just like, and I'm like, I'm in Paris fucking smoking a Cuban cigar doing my work. Like, why, why do I have to do this at my, in my home? This yeah. is a way better, cooler place to do it. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank Zylia for fucking being so open about all her fucking experiences. You are. It was super fun talking to you. Yeah. Were you nervous? You didn't have to be nervous, did you? Am I wrong? No. It was way better. Yeah. Thank you. What's up? Who is inspired by that? There's two ways you can go when you hear a story like that. One, you can say, I gotta get to Paris on a fucking writing class. I gotta start fucking having no tethers and get out there and do fucking crazy shit. And just like, uh, the world's my oyster kind of shit. The other way to go is like, well, yeah, but her mom uh, gets free frequent flyer uh, points, so she gets to fly standby. I can never do that because of that. Which one are you going to be? I'm the former. No, I'm the latter. God, I wish I could be a vagabond like that. I wish I could be a fucking nobody and have no fucking tether to anything in the world. Wouldn't it be sick? God, it would be fun. These two weeks in Paris, man. When I'm traveling, I just get clear. I just get fucking even-minded. Three days here. And I was already like, oh, I'm for sure doing a European tour in, in April. April or May. I was like, no, I still got to hit all these markets in America. And, and Europe doesn't pay as much. The costs are so much higher. It doesn't pay as much. Maybe I, you know, it's time away from my dog. Fuck it. Two days here. I was like, what am I? A uh, fucking, uh, 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 fucking spaz? Sorry, Beyonce? I'm sorry. I apologize. That is ableist. Doesn't ableist mean you're into able people? Should it be disabledist? Beyonce is changing a lyric from her, from one of her songs. She said spaz. So now Maz Jobrani is about to get name checked a bunch. Um, because the um, retarded community, specifically, <laughs> the specifically the, um, what was Stevie Z? The ones that's like, they look Down syndrome, but they're not. Which one is that? Cerebral palsy. They were very upset because they're spazzes. And they're like, you, that's our word. That's not your word. Or something. I don't know. And so Beyonce, because I guess she's uh, fucking uh, afraid of her audience now, has gone back and, re <laughs> and rewritten the lyrics. Did I remember when it, uh, Raymond Carver rewrote um, he found love. He was a very fucking bitter man, and then he found love, and he rewrote what we talk about when we talk about love. And the 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 audience, the fans, are like that's no, you already wrote that, you already put that out. You don't get to rewrite that. It's ours now. It's ours now. Guess what's about to be yours? Ari Shafir Jew coming this fall to your screens. Um. Anyway. That's the episode. Uh, 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 if you have any questions, uh, Zylia was like, reach out. It's Zylista, X-Y-L-I-S-T-A on Instagram. If you like the episode, if you like hearing about some fucking fun shit and just someone who's free, even if you can't be free, isn't it fun if someone else is? Isn't it fucking pretty badass? What a cool life. Not just a month or two. I, I, not even uh, six months. I went to Ecuador for six months. That's the longest any of my friends have ever gone away. Six years. Wow, is that 12 times as long as I was gone? Yeah, Jesus Christ, no tether. It is interesting though, when you're like, well, I would get lonely. And she's like, yeah, right, yes, there are negatives. I, I liked it, I'm very, very honest, very cool. And really, uh, Zylia, I'm, I'm jealous of your life. That's fucking rad. And if you're, it's coming to an end, that is sad, but uh, fucking hope the new chapter in your life is just as fun. But it won't be, 
because <laughs> you were fucking you were fucking world traveling nomad. How could it be? Uh, everything sucks. Anyway, you guys, um, I will tell you all about my fucking uh, trip to 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 well a lot about it anyway in the class and the things I got out of it. Uh, my Patreon this week. Go to patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. Sign up for one month. Listen, and then cancel it. Or sign up for the year. I think you get a discount if you sign up for a year. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Not only does that give you t- 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 like 20 episodes for the year, it also keeps me, you know, taking time off. I'm going two weeks to Paris. That's You guys paid for that. The fucking patrons. So I don't have to worry about, you know, ah, whatever. You get it. Two cigars, two comics, two cigars. No, wait. Two comics, two cigars. Two comics, two cigars. The number two comics, the number two cigars. YouTube.com slash two comics, two cigars. It's coming in like a week, you guys. Subscribe right now. The first episode will be out uh, before you know it. That's it. Get out there, you guys. Go see the world. I recorded another podcast uh, with another classmate. Uh, I've got a new podcast. Well, we'll tease that another time. But another episode was had. That you guys will have. God, I love this city. I never had a draw for the city at all, and I love it. I love it. Get out there, you guys. Get out and have some fun. I'm Ari Shafir. This has been Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 480. Nomad for Zylea Burroughs. I'm Ari Shafir. I nailed it. Saying so long.